All right, so everyone's got their paper. I hope a nice big stack of paper. Everyone's got their pens. Hopefully you've got a headset or earbuds. So check, check, check. Make sure you got those three things. Okay, super important. All right, make sure you're comfortable. You want to be seated in a very comfortable fashion. I'm sitting on my bed. I've got pillows behind me. You want to be nice and relaxed. So everyone get themselves sorted so that we can jump into the training aspect. Okay. So make sure you're situated. Everyone's going to the bathroom. You're nice and you're nice and relaxed. Oh yeah, um, yes. If everyone could um, put themselves on mute, that would be so super helpful. And if you do have a question, um, put it in the chat box, and Dips or Mario or myself will try and you know catch it and and give it an answer. Okay, so, all right, so hopefully everyone is getting themselves sorted and settled and nice and comfortable in a really good state. All right, so first I'd like to talk to you guys about where the heck did remote viewing come from? <laughs> all right, so remote viewing is something that people have done like for as long as there's been people. <laughs> um, it's innate. It, it's something that happens within us. And it's been called many things over time. And so there's, there's many ancient stories about kings sending away to, you know, someone who is a seer. And, you know, they'll say, well, what was I doing yesterday? I want to know if you're real. And there's been seers that have reported, well, I saw you making like rabbit stew yesterday. And of course, that's what the king was doing. And so well, that was remote viewing, right? And so, well, what is remote viewing known to us today? So we're going to go back to the 1970s. And we're going to talk about the reemergence of what we call remote viewing in our modern society. So 1970s, Stanford Research Institute, um, headed by Russell Targ, Hale Pudoff, those were two physicists. Russell Targ is a laser guy, and Hale Pudoff, also a physicist. Um, they started looking into some paranormal stuff, and there was an artist from New York City at the time. His name was Ingo Swan. Um, Ingo Swan uh, teamed up with Russell Targ and Hale Pudoff at SRI, Stanford Research Institute, and they developed this protocol that we know today as remote viewing. Now, remote viewing is not a very accurate name for what we're actually doing. It would be better described as remote sensing because what we're actually doing is we are sensing with our bodies. So we're using our innate psychic abilities that every single one of us has. And we're gonna use that to sense something. So the reason that they called it remote viewing because some of the experiments that they were doing at the time is they would roll a dice and they would have one, one of the persons would go to a remote location and Ingo Swan would make a sketch, make a drawing, write down descriptors of where that person went. So that's why they called it remote viewing because they sent someone remotely and Ingo was viewing and sensing where they were. So program went pretty well. The CIA comes along and says, well, we want to pick this up. So CIA picks it up. And then there's government gets a hold of it and they start doing stuff like Project Stargate and all these other different types of military type of applications. Um, around the mid 19, so this is in the 1970s. So mid 1990s, I think I was a teenager then. All right, so mid 1990s, um, this gets declassified, but it's kind of um, like a, like a, they tried to keep it calm. They didn't want people to get too crazy excited. 
So it was released to the public. And then you had a bunch of military personnel that were teaching their own versions of remote viewing. So there's a lot of different remote viewing styles out there. Um, some of them are targeted for finding a missing person, finding a specific location. Um, some of them are, are, are targeted for scientific research. So there's different remote viewing styles are tailored for different things that people are doing. There's technical remote viewing. There's a lot of different kinds. So my remote viewing training, I got from Transdimensional Systems, and I was taught by John Vivenko. And I was taught in Washington um, over about a five-day period. And it, it was fantastic. Um, and so there's a lot of different styles that you're going to learn. I have my own style that I've come up with. But I want to teach you the basics of remote viewing because the basics is a pretty good place to start. But after you learn the basics, I like to take the, what I say, take the training wheels off and then really put the training on steroids, which is eventually, if you guys stick with this, I'll teach you how to make multi-dimensional reports. But I have to teach you the basics before I can teach you how to make a multi-dimensional report because through the basics, we're going to identify so many things about our strengths and weaknesses. And so we need to dive into the basics first to identify the strengths and weaknesses, and then we can make a multi-dimensional report to help you with your strengths and weaknesses. So, so I'm so excited you guys are here. So you guys are gonna learn the basic protocol for learning remote viewing. It's gonna, this is CRV, is known as controlled remote viewing, okay? And so I'm going to teach you guys the way I do it. And I found that by doing this from a heart-centered space, really improved accuracy. So my emphasis is doing this from a heart-centered space. Um, and I, I found it to be super helpful. And so you guys are learning um, CRV today. It's going to be very basic CRV, but it's, it's going to be awesome. Okay. And I don't want you guys to judge yourself at all on today's performance because it's literally like going to the gym and you're going to pick up a 300 pound barbell, right? And you might not be able to do that the first day. Okay. But some of you are going to be able to do it right off the get go. Like I did. Some of you are going to be able to do it. Some of you are going to have to work at it and that is okay. And I've seen some students come in and instantly they nail it and they have extremely high accuracy. And I've seen students come in with a there very low accuracy, but they worked at it. And within a couple of months, they were up here and they were smoking the person that originally came in with high accuracy. And so don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. Uh, and don't judge yourself harshly on this. So I want you guys to give yourself so much self-love and encouragement in this process because it is so important. Okay. So I want to talk to you a little bit more about uh, Stanford Research Institute and some of the controls that they did. Well, so they thought, wow, okay, this guy Ingo Swan is pretty amazing. He's, he's an artist. He's an amazing psychic. He's developing this remote viewing protocol. Well, what if we bring in a control? What if we bring in someone that has no experience at all? So someone by the name of Hella Hammond came in, and Hella had no experience in anything psychic whatsoever. Zero zilch none they taught her the same protocol that you guys are going to learn today. And she was one of the top, like she was one of the best remote viewers also. And so there, there was a lot of that done that really dispels this kind of like ego-ish myth that's kind of going around. That's like, you have to be special in order to be able to do this. It's actually not true. We all can do this. This is within you. You have the power to do this. You have the ability to do this. And you can ask any of my previous students, which you guys can meet after today if you join any of our groups. I am so dedicated to helping every single person learn how to do this because I know how extraordinarily empowering it is. It is so empowering. And so the power is within you. And I'm really here to help break the, the guru paradigm 
the fact that the power is outside of you. And I'm about putting that power back inside of you and reconnecting yourself to your innate abilities, your innate powers. Um, so I'm, I'm so excited. This is, this is so fun for me as a teacher to get to share this with you. Um, it's, it's just fantastic. So um, that's a little bit about the history of remote viewing. There's a whole lot of other research that I, you know, we could talk about that I could bore you on. There's, um, lastly, I'll wrap the remote viewing history up. Um, so remote viewing was like not really well accepted by, by some places. They, they didn't really want to, they didn't really want to accept it. And some people were critics of it. Well, there was independent research done. Um, by somebody by the name of Jessica Utz, U-T-T-S. Um, and she had extensively analyzed and researched the experiments that were, that were um, done at SRI during the 1970s. And um, her report had concluded that psychic functioning had been well established and that effects of so, so, uh, sim similar magnitude had been replicated um, at a number of laboratories across the world and that such uh, consistency could not be readily explained by terms of um, fraud. And so there has been studies done that has confirmed the accuracy of remote viewing. So there, there is a lot of, I know like if you might Google some of this, it might say pseudoscience, but there is hard scientific research because again, this was created by physicists. Um, and they worked very hard to get their research out there, to get it declassified, to bring it, bring it to us. So, all right, so that's the last I'm gonna talk about that. All right, so any questions about the history of remote viewing before we move on? All right, are we good? Okay, good. All right. I'm so excited. Okay, so there are some really interesting concepts that I wanna share with you guys about consciousness and conscious perception. Um, so how do you view time? What do you think time is? Um, so I wanna talk to you about time because when I learned remote viewing, my mind got blown about what time really is and what I thought it was. So I want to talk to you. All right, so doo -doo -doo -doo. All right, I want to make sure you can see this. Okay, so here's the past, here's now, and here's the future. So we'll put an F, F for future, D for past. Now, we believe time is linear. So we think this is the past right here. This is now. This is the future. It's actually not true. <laughs> I know we think it is, but it's not true. <laughs> and you're going to prove it to yourself with remote viewing. Now, physicists have proven this. This is new research. Physicists have said, hey, time's not linear. And of course, humans are like, what the heck? Time is actually more like this. So if you took a, I'm gonna talk artist terms because my background's artist. If you took a piece of clay and you rolled it out like a piece of string and you said, here's past, here's now, here's future, that's actually not true. You could roll that clay up into a ball and everything is happening all at the same time. So th this is, that's actually, uh, that's actually how time works. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some drawings for you and I'm gonna share some things with you guys that I, I want you to see. So remember when I, I, I said that I, I had done insane amounts of remote viewing after I learned a remote view? Well, one of the main topics that I was fascinated by was the concept of time. I was like, how have I been living my life thinking the time's linear because I think that yesterday was this and that. So I'm gonna, ex I'm gonna share with you the research that I've done in remote viewing because it's gonna help you, it's gonna help you in general to understand what the heck you're doing because you're gonna be like, how am I doing this? And so 
um, I want you to understand how, how you're actually remote viewing. And this is my research of what I found. I know this sounds like a, this looks like a very crazy sketch. You wouldn't believe I'm an artist looking at this, would you? <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna start a new sketch. <laughs> All right, this is gonna be so much fun. All right, so we're gonna start with a little basic stick man. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So this is Heather, okay. This is the Heather you're talking to right now, all right? And let's say there's little eyeballs all over Heather. And each of these eyeballs is a consciousness. So here's an eyeball, here's an eyeball, here's an eyeball. Really, there's just like consciousnesses all over me. They're everywhere. Eyeball, there's an eyeball here, eyeball here, eyeball. Okay, and here is a book. And here's a book, and here's a book. All right, so this right here, this is the book of Heather right now. She thinks it's the year 2020. She thinks there's COVID virus going on. She thinks that, you know, all this stuff is happening. This is Heather's consciousness that is identified to this place. And Heather here is living out the archetype of a teacher. This is what she's doing. So a lot of you have probably heard about past lives or have had a past life reading or had a past life memory even. Or maybe you even had a glimpse of the future. Maybe you don't know how to control it. I didn't. Okay, so let's jump down here to this eyeball. Let's say this eyeball down here is a past life Heather. Past life Heather is, she's a villain. Brr, she's a pirate. She's doing pirate stuff. And this one right here, this is a future Heather. And this one, Heather's a galactic feline being. Okay. So how could these all be happening at the same time? Well, they are. All of these versions of me are happening at the same time. And so I want to talk to you next about entering this place that's called the void. So we're going to say the void. Well, what the heck is the void? The void is the place that you drop. That's a closed eyelash, if you're wondering what that is. It's a closed eyeball. Um, the void is the place that you go when you drop your identifications. And your identification is a limitation. And so if I'm identified as Heather living in the year 2020, I'm stuck there. I'm limited to that identification. And so when we go into meditation, we enter the void. This is the place of no identification. So no ID. And when we drop our identification, our attachment to our identifications here, we're able to thread the eye of the needle and become nothing. Now, a lot of you have probably already done this naturally, maybe during a meditation, maybe in a, you were just falling asleep. And you know what happened? Because you closed this eye right here that you think you're living, you got a glimpse of this life right here, or you got a glimpse of this life. So that eye opened, or that eye opened, and you thought that you were looking at past lives, or you thought you were looking at future lives, but what you were actually seeing was other lives. Now, I wanna talk about how these other lives you are living are actually connected. So these stars are representing chakras. So I am putting these chakras on the body. They're a little bit sloppy, but it's okay. So these are stars, star, 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 star. These are chakras. Chakras are portals. And every life that you are living is connected and unified in one central chakra system. And so this is why, and I can teach you guys medical remote viewing also. Um, medical remote viewing, I can teach you guys after you learn this basic remote viewing. But here's what I found when I would look, when I would do medical remote viewing. So I learned that at the same time that I learned regular remote viewing, is that whew, these can have cords going off of them, connecting to other lifetimes. 
that could be draining that chakra, that could be draining that energy system because there's the wound. So I'll make a quick drawing for you of it. So here's the wound, right? Ego goes up over top to protect the wound that happened here. And this can happen in another lifetime, guys. This doesn't even happen, have to happen in this lifetime. All right, so ego. And then there's belief systems that spray out of that. So we'll say the mental self. So down here's the spirit self, the wound. Then you got mental. And then up here, you've got physical. So you got physical manifestation. So up here, you have physical. Here, you have mental. You have the ego. And it's all protecting a central wound. And every single medical remote viewing that I have ever done to help unsolved cases or people that are sick, they don't know what's wrong with them, they've, they've tried everything. Every single case I have looked at, there is always a wound, okay? So a wound can look something like, um, for example, one young lady I looked at, her parents weren't really supportive of her. And I could hear words coming in such as, you're not good enough, you're second best. You're not good enough. And you know what that did? It made a wound in her self-esteem. And it affected her in her root chakra. And so the energy was getting clogged in the root chakra. It was, a very, it was very dim. And I could see this cord that was kind of drifting off of the chakra that took to that time, that place, that space, where her parents were saying that you're not good enough, you're second best, you know, we don't love you. And when I talked to her about it, she started crying and she was very emotional. And she said, my mom and dad divorced when I was very young and my mom remarried and they had a son and he was like the golden child. And I was kind of forgotten about. And so the wound was there and, it, and she had back problems as well lower back problems. And so everything is connected. The spiritual, the energetic creates mental belief systems. And it also creates a physical, physical thing. And now this also applies to other lives. So say, for example, you got cheated on in another life by a lover and you died an old, bitter person. Well, you're going to carry that memory in your energetic body because our chakra system is the true library of accessing information. It's not accessing information from your mind. Um, that's a big injustice that is done to society, that we're taught to get information from our mind. But the true information for us to access is by accessing our inner library. So all of this is the Akashic field. This whole, this whole being, this is the Akashic field. And also, these eyeballs, they got more eyeballs coming off of them. There's more consciousnesses going off, going off here, going off there. They're going off everywhere. And you know what those are? That's the collective consciousness. And so this is how we are all connected. Now this here, these ones right here, this is called your oversoul. This is your oversoul. And so your oversoul, this might be your twin flame right here. You're meeting an aspect of you. That is your twin flame. Now, everyone is actually a reflection of you because we are all one. And so with remote viewing, you have to drop your individual identity in order to go into the void and become nothing. And when you become nothing, you have the ability to become everything, to become everyone, everywhere, all space, all time. So what happened to me when I started experiencing this? When I went into this void, close the eye, forgot that I was Heather, forgot where I was at, close that eye. When I opened my eye, all these eyes opened at once. Talk about intense. It was literally as if I was seeing, um, was as if I was seeing all of my lives connected as one playing out at the same time. And so this is real, this can happen, you can do this. And we're gonna do this in remote viewing. We're gonna become no one, no where, no time, no place. And this is actually the truth of who we are. We are all connected and we are all versions of one being. 
And in remote viewing, you're going to find that telepathy is the normal means of communication, that we all communicate telepathically. And I'll tell you what, you do not get to pick and choose what you share telepathically. It's just going to, it's just going to get transferred. It's just how that is because we believe that we are separated and that has to do with a dimensional construct. So, all right, more remote viewing data. Okay. So here's the third dimension. Here's the fourth dimension. Here's the fifth. Here's the sixth. Seventh, eighth, ninth. Your conscious perception on three is pretty small compared to nine, right? Now, you might be here on three and you might be like, well, yeah, that's true though. This is going on. But it's actually not. It's only happening because your consciousness thinks it does because you've set your consciousness down here. And now with remote viewing, is I teach you to drop your identifications, to let go of who you think you are. We can direct your consciousness to any of these dimensions, to see through the eyes of the higher perception and higher realms, to look at the same maybe problem you've been facing over and over and over. We're shifting your consciousness because what is consciousness? Consciousness is all things. Consciousness is all things. A rock is conscious, the grass is conscious, the trees are conscious, everything is conscious. This pillow, this bed, everything is conscious. It is all consciousness. It's all consciousness expressing itself, okay? And so you guys are gonna be trained to do this in remote viewing where you can bring your consciousness to, because we can't solve third dimensional problems from looking at them from a third dimensional reality. We have to be willing to let go of who we are. We have to be willing to let go of our separations. We have to let go of our identifications. And you know why we have identifications? Because of this. We're back to the wound. We have identifications. We think we're separate because we're wounded. And our ego attaches itself to identifications. Now. One of the things that helped me be an awesome remote viewer was that when I went into it, I had ego death. And I said, I am willing to be a fool. I am letting my ego go. I'm willing to make a fool of myself. and I don't care because I want to know who I really am so much that I am willing to let go of everything that I think that I am so that I can see what I truly am. And so you guys will all become nothing so that you can become everything. So we're time travelers, guys. Every single one of us, we're time travelers. I'm going to explain to you how, and I can prove it to you because I'm going to send you on time traveling missions. All right. So, all right. Whew, I get so excited talking about this. It's so exciting, you guys. I'm so excited for you guys. All right, so here's who you think you are right now. And this is your consciousness. This purple marker is your consciousness, okay? I can direct your consciousness through remote viewing to go into what you think is the future, to go into what you think is the past, to go anywhere. You can get information, you can have experiences, and you can bring it back where we're at right now, where we're sharing this collective consciousness experience right now, I can teach you guys how to do that. And you're going to do it. You're going to be time travelers. You already are. You're already doing it and you don't even know it. It's just no one probably told you, or maybe you didn't believe them when you thought they were crazy, or maybe you weren't ready to believe that yet. But whew, I'm so excited for you guys. So there's a few different ways that I can help you expand your consciousness. Um, there's, there's, um, we can create time loops, for example. I'll show you how we create a time loop. So this is gonna sound so crazy, which is awesome. Okay, all right, so back to my awesome sketches. All right, so let's say we're right here. We think it's, we think it's Saturday. 
We think we're here. We're all hanging out here. Well, I can send your consciousness to Sunday. I can have you get a piece of information and bring it back to right here. And that's creating a time loop. And I can teach you guys how to do that. Um, it's pretty easy. It's called a closed time loop. It's basically like uh, this version of you is handing the baton off to future you and future you is handing the baton back. And that's what we call a closed loop in remote viewing. And so I can teach you guys how to make closed loops for remote viewing. They can be as big or as uh, small as you want. Uh, you could do a loop over 10 years. Um, maybe you want to know like, hey, what's, what sex is the baby going to be that I have? Is it a boy or a girl? Well, you haven't even met your husband yet. But, you know, you, you can check that out. You can find that out. And you can bring that data back if you want to. Because you are not confined. The only thing that confines us is our consciousness, the identifications we place on our consciousness. Because seeing is not believing. We've got to put a blindfold over all these things that we've been told are reality. And we can go within and find what the true reality is. And so what I love about remote viewing so much, you guys, is that remote viewing is a perfect marriage of science and spirituality and it brings them together so that there's accountability in this process because you might be saying well like okay heather that's awesome that you're a great remote viewer but what about me i don't know what i'm doing well you're gonna learn and that's why i am calling you all to a level of self-mastery that if you do this i promise you that it is going to refine you and it is going to help you connect to what is truly authentic. What is the authentic signal line? Now, when I did this training, um, I, I know people that have done this training that have said to be psychics for years. And they came in and they did this training and they bonked it. They just crashed. Well, you know why? Their training was crap. They were taught to access the imagination rather than access an accurate signal line and it crushed their ego, but it was a good thing because it brought awareness. And so this process is not gonna allow you an opportunity to make things up. And if you do make things up, you're gonna learn the exact difference between where did I make things up and where did I connect to the accurate signal line, okay? So, all right, I know I've been talking a lot about this, but I hope, I hope you guys got those concepts of what I'm sharing um, about time. And well, it took me quite a while to really, you know, wrap my head around the fact that, okay, time is actually happening all the time. Um, the cool thing is, um, if you guys have any questions, throw them in the box. I'll do questions for a few minutes before we go on to the next teaching. Um, but yeah, time is so cool. We can, we can move our consciousness all around. Um, and also, by healing now, by healing right now, we can heal the past us and we can heal the future us because time is all happening at once. Just like this, this picture, this beautiful picture that I drew for you guys. So fancy. Um, just like this is all happening. You can heal here, here, here. You can heal all these wounds now. So you've heard people talk about the power of now, holy friggin' smokes, were they right? <laughs> so this is, this is no joke, you guys, this is powerful. I know it looks like an ant person, but they really just got more consciousness going all out of them. And so as we remove these limitations of consciousness, we become each other. So I, I wanna tell you a little bit about the third dimension while I'm waiting for your questions to roll in about this, this teaching. The third dimensional thinking, Earth is a near dimension. So we came here, we as in all of us as one being, we came here on Earth and we started to see ourselves through a bunch of fractals and a bunch of mirrors. And we think that we are separate, but we are not separate. And as you do remote viewing and you go into the void and you look through the higher dimensions, you're going to see that we're all one. In fact, other beings 
don't even see us as separate. They see us as all the one, same one being. I mean, can you imagine how friggin' powerful and badass we all are? Like, we are awesome, you guys. We are so awesome. So we're in this mirror dimension. That's why we think we're others. We're told for the enemy that you hate and you're just like, oh, I can't stand that person to the person that you adore more than anything. They're you. They're you. The one you don't like, the one you, you adore. It's all you. So, so make peace within, make peace outside. It's all you. Okay. So you're going to see that with remote viewing. So learning remote viewing is so liberating because you can tell people that, but after they experience the merge and the oneness of all, woo, you're not going to come back from that one unchanged. It's going to rock you. <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to try and answer some questions right now um, before we move on to the next teaching step. Um, yes, Gary, you can. You can instantly uh, re remove things. Absolutely. Um, addictions, things like that. Um, yeah, chakra healing is so important because, well, so every, everything relates to, uh, um, is all the energy body. The energy body is tied in with the mental body, which is tied into the physical body. If you think about a waterfall and it's flowing downstream, it's all connected. And so um, there's, as there's energetic healing, there is consciousness expansion. There's physical, physical regeneration that's going on as well. So let's see. Um, can, uh, if you can see all time, including the future, does that mean that your future is already decided? Um, no, it just means that you chose it. <laughs> so there's, so there's a couple different ways I could talk about that could teach you guys about seeing the future. So through CRV, um, which is what you're going to learn today, CRV, you're going to look at the most, if you're looking at the future with CRV, you are seeing the most probable future outcome from this point in time. However, if you do the time loop that I was talking to you guys about, creating that time loop where you hand off to future you and future you hands it back and you take it back with you, that's different. That's, that's going to be done, right? Because you're not going to trick you. You're going to give you the honest and true information. But when you're using CRV, which you guys are learning today, um, you're seeing the most probable outcome. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, anything beyond the void? Um, well, so a little bit more about the void. So the void is the space of um, where you have space to be nothing. So being able to be in the space of being nothing um, allows you to strip away all the identifications that you currently have so that you can be anything. So really, it's like, think of a wide open field of just darkness. And it's not darkness as in like scary dark, it's darkness as in like, I can create anything I want here. I can be anything I want here. I can, I can be this, I can be that, I can be that, I can be that. So it's this, it gives you space so that you can, that you can um, be anything. So I like to say the greatest thing I can be is nothing. Because that means that I've stripped away my ego, I've let go of my attachments of whatever those might be. Um, and I'm in a good place. Yeah, this can help remove traumas. So I can teach you guys medical or remote viewing also. Um, go in and take a look at those. And so sometimes when, when we're looking at the wound, like someone's wound and the ego and the, the thoughts and then the physical, you're going to tap into the spiritual, the mental, the energetics. You're going to tap into all of it. And so um, even the act of you observing this wound can give the person that is experiencing it the courage to look at it because ego pops up to protect the wound from getting touched again because that is a vulnerable area it doesn't it's scared it's trying to protect itself it's wounded it it the wound in itself is a misbelief it is swallowing a pill of something that is not true so for example we talked earlier about the girl who felt like she maybe wasn't good enough or wasn't loved. Well, she swallowed a truth that wasn't true. She let, you know, that, that got to her. It got to her. She felt like she wasn't enough. 
And so because it got to her, she swallowed that truth or that, that false truth, we'll say. And then she started expressing the false truth. So what are some things that the ego did? It said, well, what were the beliefs that came out of that? Well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to try too hard to reach for anything too high in the sky because I don't want to get rejected again. I don't want to be told I'm not enough again. So I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to play it safe. I'm not going to reach for the stars. I'm just, I'm just going to reach what I know I can get because that rejection pain is so bad that we make our actions and our beliefs that spring out of it to protect us from those things. And they hold us back. And what it was doing to our energetic self is it was siphoning, it was draining the, the red chakra, the root chakra, it was draining it. And the physical self was getting back problems. So, okay, I'm going to try and answer a few more questions and then we're going to move on. Um, You can remove them and others. However, the, the, the person that, um, that you're helping, they have to participate. So 50-50, it's got to be, they, they have to want it. One of the biggest blocks that I found to, to healing, to, to regeneration, is a victim mentality. And so that's a tough one because a lot of us have gone through victim mentality. And um, I have this phrase that I like to use where I help, I try and help people go from being a victim to being a magician, because all that power and that magic to heal, whatever that is, is within you. And so we can talk about that um, another time. I don't want to get too far into it right now. We can talk about that more in medical remote viewing if you want. Um, let's see. How does one do, well, chakra healing. Okay, so Tanya is asking, um, how can one do chakra healing? So you can make a remote viewing task box for yourself, which I did after I learned remote viewing. Um, this is what mine looks like right now. I know, laugh, it's just a cheap Amazon box, guys, really. Um, Amazon box with a bunch of things in there. Usually I've got hundreds in here. There's probably about 100 left in there right now of things that I want to remote view. And of course the outside is blank because you got to do it blind. So you never get to know what you're remote viewing while you're remote viewing it. It's all done blind, which is what brings the integrity to the process. Um, chakra healing was one of the things that I remote viewed and it was so cool because I felt ting, 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 ting on my body as if someone was tinging a, uh, like a piece of silverware on some crystals. And I could hear like ting, 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 and I could feel it through my body. And I was, you know, sketching out, drawing out, describing what I was experiencing in my body. And I was like, whoa, I got powered up and I saw my Merkaba and it was like, what the heck is this? This is like crazy. Well, the remote viewing task was give yourself a chakra alignment and power up. So apparently the chakra alignment helped power up my Merkaba. <laughs> and since then it's been known as the Ferrari. So, um, yes, you can absolutely align your own chakras. Um, all right, let's see if I can get a few more. Oh my God, there's so many questions. I want to answer them all. Um, okay. Yes, you can access the void even without being an expert meditator. And that's why, um, I got you guys to make sure you've got your, make sure you've got your headset. Super important. Um, because I'm going to give you a cheat, a way to do it really fast, like a shortcut. Um, okay, let's see if anyone's got any other questions. Yeah, we, all right, so we covered some healing. Can I explain a little bit more on the future self giving future information? Yes. Um, so, if, uh, so, when you're doing controlled remote viewing, CRV, which you guys are going to learn today, and you're going to get to practice it today, and then you'll be given access to practice with our daily class if you want to. You can come again. It's free. I don't charge anything. I just want you I want everyone to grow because after all, you are me and I am you. So, um, so um, when you're doing controlled remote viewing, you're looking at it from, you know, today is the 13th, and um, we're remote viewing from you know, the year 2020. And say, for example, we're remote viewing the next president of the United States, which I've been remote viewing regularly lately because I'm pretty curious. So you can, uh, 
you can remote view from this date and this time and say, given all the events and everything that has happened right now, from this time and space, I'm moving my consciousness forward and I am connecting to the most likely scenario, the most likely outcome of what's going to happen with the presidential election. And so from now, I'm sorry to break it to you guys, but Trump is on point to win as of right now. I've remote viewed it like three times and got the same information. Um, but Trump has free will and he could make different decisions along that timeline. So maybe I remote view it next week um, or in a month from now. Maybe he really ticks some people off. Um, if I'm viewing it from there, so I move my, I'm going to move myself here now. And now I'm going to look at the most probable outcome based on the free will that he exercised. And so he might not be the winner. So when we're doing CRV and we want to look at a future, we are seeing the most probable future outcome from where you're viewing it right now. So stuff like the election, we would view as it gets closer, 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 we continue to remote view that as we get closer. Um, now the other type of remote viewing, which is a different structure, I don't think I'll have time to teach it to you guys today, but if you come to my practice classes, I can totally try and set up a time to teach you this because it's a different style entirely. That style is this here, which is where you're moving your consciousness to the future, you're getting a piece of information, and then you are bringing it back to now. And so basically think of someone handing yourself, handing a baton off to yourself. So think of like you're handing a baton to future you and future you is relaying it back to right now. Cause really what you're doing is you're moving your consciousness through time and space, getting information and then carrying it back with you. So this is a closed loop. Whereas the other kind is open. Okay. And both, both kinds are good. You might find you like one kind better than the other. It's okay. All right, let's see. Um, so many questions. Dips, can you um, try and consolidate, look through the group because I can't read through them all and talk at the same time. Try and look through and um, see if there's a consensus on like the questions um, so that I can, you know, answer maybe the most pressing pressing curiosities um oh by the way guys people have used this to like play the lottery and win so there like there's a there's a remote viewer he played like the pick three i think like three times and he like posted his answers and they were all right so <laughs> this is pretty solid now it, you have to ask yourself does it feel like ethical to do that do you feel like you have the karma to do that well maybe you do <laughs> so all right. So, all right. Any other things? Yeah, fears from ego. Um, all right, I'm just trying to read through your questions real quick. Um, okay, Leslie's asking about entity clearing. We do have some uh, recommended meditations for entity clearing. Um, Dips can send you uh, send you one of those, Leslie, and just at, just reach out to her privately, and she'll send you one um, either now or after class. Um, have I ever met a student who just couldn't master CRV? Nope, haven't met a student. So um, I'll show you what the graph looks like for most people. Now I'm not gonna say all, because this doesn't happen to all, but most students, they tend to look a particular way in their progress. So you're gonna see my very fancy art skills again. All right, so I know it's so high tech. This is what it looks like, the good, the bad, the ugly. You start out here, you go up here, you get real confident, and ego, ego helps you go for a dip. You get better, you drop a little again, you get better, you drop a little again, you get better, you drop, you get better, you drop. But over time, you get consistently more accurate. So 
you've got to be prepared going into this emotionally that when you're down here, when you're hitting these slumps and you don't feel like you got it or you don't feel like you're special, you got to be resilient. You got to believe in yourself. And you got to detach yourself to say, it's okay if I didn't get an A. It doesn't matter because the process itself refines me. The process itself, the practice itself is what it is my path of self mastery. Because every time you go to the gym, you are building strength. And even if you didn't get it right, you still learned something. You learned about what you got was accurate and what you got wasn't accurate. You learn just as much as these low peaks as you do the high peaks. And so don't, you gotta, so this is your first challenge in attachment, of letting go of attachment, of feeling like I'm a good student and I got it right, or I'm a bad student, I got it wrong. So this is your first challenge. Let go of those belief systems. So remember what I said when I stepped into remote viewing? I said, I'm giving myself permission to be a fool. I'm going to be the biggest fool I can be. And I really did. And I said, it doesn't matter if I fail. It doesn't matter if I sound stupid. It doesn't matter if I'm the only person in the class saying the crazy stuff that's going to come out of my mouth. I am just going to give myself permission to express what is in me without knowing if it's right or wrong. I'm just going to express it. I'm not going to judge it. I'm just going to let it out. And that was a key to my success. And that's going to be a key to your success. And so I know we were all raised in a society where we want to get an A, we want the gold star. And you know what? You're going to have days that you're on top of the wave. And you're going to have days where you're down here. If you stick with this, I promise you that you will get up here. If you stick with it, you will. This is going to, now this is going to be different for each and every one of you. But I will help each and every one of you no matter where you're at on here. Okay? And I identified three major things that people struggle with when they're going through remote viewing. So I'm going to tell you what they are now because if and when they come up to you, you'll be like, oh yeah, Heather told me about that. And then I'm going to encourage you to be like, it's okay. So number one, the first thing that I noticed that blocks remote viewers is meditation. Can they calm their mind? Can they calm their mind? Can they get their mind to be in a relaxed state where they're withholding thought? So if they could withhold thought, that's going to help. So if you're a meditator and you meditate in a way that you pause all thought, that's going to help you with this process. Now, if you're not an expert meditator, that's okay. You can start. And these binaural beats that we're going to share with you, they're going to help. They're going to help you tremendously because they're going to get you in that exact sweet spot that you want to be. So when studies were conducted at Stanford Research Institute and they were looking at what the best brain waves to be in for accurate remote viewing data, they found that it was theta waves, seven hertz theta waves. And so that's why we use binaural beats. There's a ton of free ones online. We're going to give you a recommendation to a free one that some of our students use. Um, if you like it, great. If, if you don't like it, there's other binaural beat theta waves online that you can use too. But the number one thing is the, the ability to withhold thought. And so I'm going to talk to you a bit about the brain waves. So we've got beta, which is, oh my God, my mom's coming and I need to clean my house like now and you're running around, you're thinking, you're acting, you're moving, you're doing. Okay, number two, alpha brain waves. I'm an artist, I'm in a creative flow, I'm just painting my painting, it's great. Okay, theta, I'm about to go to sleep. I just woke up. So very chill, very relaxed. You naturally go into theta when you wake up in the morning, and you naturally go into theta before you fall asleep at night. So theta is our sweet spot. And then you have delta, which is when you're dreaming, and then you have gamma. So theta is where we want to be. Okay, so that covers the first block that remote viewers face, is that meditative aspect. Second block, judgment. Oh boy, judgment. Now, if you judge yourself and you're hard on yourself about anything, that is going to come through in your remote viewing. Um, if you judge others, that is going to come through in your remote viewing. So 
when I look at your remote viewing reports, I can see so much about your guys' personality because we all remote view through our own personality. So this process is gonna bring your awareness to the way that you're judging yourself. And so one of, this, one of the things that happens when people are judging themselves is they don't let the data out. So oftentimes these individuals, the throat chakra, the blue one, and the sacral chakra, the orange one, those are about creativity and expression. They're restrained. They're very controlled and they're very restrained. And this is where artists do very well because they're used to just expressing, um, just expressing. And so if you're worried about, you know, if you're worried about looking like a fool, um, you're gonna restrain the process and you're gonna try and control the process because your logical brain is gonna try and figure out what's going on without letting you just sense. Because remote viewing is really about sensing. It's not about creating a story in your mind, it's just about sensing what's happening inside of you, okay? So that's the second one that's gonna come up. The third block that may or may not come up for you is that ego. Who is just like something that we all fight with, right? It's just totally normal. We all fight with the ego. And a lot of times people have no idea what a pain in the arse the ego is, but it really is, <laughs> it's there. Um, but the ego also is pointing an arrow to the wound because wherever our ego popped up, it popped up because it came up over a wound. So there's a belief that we swallowed that is lesser true or something that hurt us. And it could have not even been from this lifetime. It could have been from another lifetime because again, our chakra systems are all merged as one. So the ego breeds identification and we want to let go of identifications because when we let go of identifications, we can enter the void and we can become anywhere, anything, we're free. So getting rid of the ego, getting rid of identification frees us, frees our consciousness from a prison of limitation. So I always like to say identification is limiting. It's a, it's a limiting construct, okay? All right, so those are the, the major things that we're all gonna have to work through. And some of you may have already worked on these issues. Some of you may have already done personal work where you're like, man, I've worked so hard to get rid of my ego, or I've worked so hard not to judge myself and just love myself and accept myself. And that's gonna show through on your remote viewing. And so that's why you have some people step into remote viewing and they're gonna just, they're gonna take right off because they've worked on those areas. Um, other people, this is going to show you, it's going to reveal to you, it's going to be eye-opener of self-mastery, and it's going, to, it's going to show you where you can work and grow on this. And so, really, you're going to learn the structure today, you're going to learn how to do it, you're going to do your first remote viewing today, and, but it's up to you to continue with it. And you have to want to do this, because getting rid of ego, and getting rid of judgment, and this this is not for the week. Like you're going to have to really be willing to get, get into there and do it. Right. Um, I can't do it for you, but I will be your cheerleader all along the way. You guys can come to my, my practice training class that we have every single day. I will cheer you on. I will, I will be your biggest advocate and you can talk to other students that have gone through this program just as you are right now. And you can ask them for their own personal experiences and they'll tell you what they've done, where, where, what they had to work through, where they're at now. Um, so we have a beautiful community that I'll invite you to because when I learned to remote view and I started relearning everything, I had to forget everything I thought I knew about the world, about myself. I had to forget everything. I said, all right, I'm starting from scratch. We're just going to start over. Let's, let's do this the right way. And I just let go of everything. And I just started to rebuild. I started to build a library to share with, to share with everyone that, hey, this is what I found out. Um, and you're going to be able to do that too. You're not going to have to take my word for it because I'm going to empower you to make you the guru because you already are. And we're going to change that guru paradigm. We're getting rid of that 
idea that the guru is outside of us. It is inside of us, 1,000, million, zillion percent. The, we just have to rebuild your self-trust. And when we rebuild your self-trust in your own discernment, your discernment's gonna go through here. And so, well, let's talk about aliens. Love aliens, okay? There's lots of beings without bodies, right? It's just like taking off a coat. Like I'm wearing a Heather coat right now, but you know what? I'm gonna take this body off and I'm gonna wear a different body on another planet when I'm done here. And so there's a lot of beings that we can communicate that have bodies and that are outside of bodies. So our bodies are not our identity, our spirit. We're, we're spirit. So, um, so there, there's so much that we can do around this, but um, I love talking to aliens. We can talk to aliens. We can telepathically communicate with aliens. And it's not just about us having the ability to do this, but we want to discern. We want to build our discernment, okay? So, um, and I tell this to channelers all the time because I think I'm a natural channeler as well myself, even though I don't actively channel. Um, you've got to learn discernment. This is, this is going to save you. This is going to help you grow so much. Um, there's so many people that are eager to jump in and do things, but one of the biggest and most important things that we can learn in this life is discernment. And I, I'm going to teach you guys inner discernment. I'm going to teach you guys how to recognize something from outside that is friendly, something that isn't friendly, something that is for your highest good versus something that is not for your highest good. And now I can teach you the steps to do it, but you guys are going to actually have to do it. And I'm going to give you coaching and feedback along the way individually and as a group to see where each of your unique needs are at for development. And you guys are going to grow in your discernment through this process because where the reason that a lack of discernment exists, it's because a lack of connection to the inner self. And so as we replug in that inner technology and we activate that innate, that innate technology, that ancient technology that has existed in you all along, as we bring you into your, into your inside, we are connecting you to everything, right? And so it's when we go to the brain and the logical brain wants to control it, wants to figure out. Well, the rational brain can only handle like seven bits of information at a time, like in, in thinking matter. So this whole process happens outside of the thinking mind. And that's why we go to the void because brain doesn't come to the void with us. Brain goes to sit, sit this one out. Okay. And brain's a wonderful antenna, but it was never meant to be the, the lead of the show. So we, so that's why I say we remote view from a heart-centered space because that's where we have to connect to because there's so much truth in there. All right. So any questions about the, the block, the, the main blockages or anything that people face, the up-down progress chart of remote viewing or, or should we move on to the next part? Okay. Okay, so you're asking a little bit about um um so so Amanda is saying, let's see. Amanda is asking if you can connect with uh I believe she was asking, can you connect to the deceased? Yeah, because um they just took off their coat. They're, they're still, they're still them. They just took a coat off. Um, um, John is asking, um, if we have to detach from the ego to enter the void, yes, you want to, yes. So here's the thing. The more that you lose every shred of what you think you are, the more that you let go of that, the better and more accurate remote viewer you're going to become. And that is because you are the target that you are viewing. You're not viewing something outside of you. You are the target that you are viewing. You are that because you're actually that big. You're everything, right? So people remote view through their personalities. And yeah, you can remote view with, you know, maybe some ego. It's just 
going to be a lot more of you in it and less of the purity, right? So the more you can let go of every shred of yourself, the better you're going to be at this. And this is a process. It's a process and it's okay. And we laugh about it all the time. We, we humor is heavy in our, in our daily practices. It's heavy. So just want you to know, we, we totally take it with a, everything with a grain of salt. We just laugh at everything because you've got to be able to laugh at yourself. Um, Kim is asking what you said about karma is important. Can you please elaborate? Um, so um, in terms of karma, so, okay, well, let's talk quickly about ethics, okay? Because ethics and karma only really kind of go together. So um, there was remote viewers that were remote viewing stuff with military, and there was other remote viewers using this for not the highest good, right? Maybe they were checking to see if their boyfriend was cheating, or maybe they were invading someone's privacy, or maybe someone got killed because what they were remote, remote viewing. Whew, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that, okay? Um, you're going to bring, you're going to involve yourself in that karmic outplay. So, for example, let's talk briefly about because you guys are going to learn to do this, okay? You guys are all going to access this power, and I don't want you guys getting yourself into trouble, okay? Um, so you can use this to find missing people. So that's a question I get all the time. Heather, do you help find missing people? Well, people that have remote, remote viewers who have remote viewed missing people and got themselves involved in, say, kidnapping cases and things like that, there was a sacred plane out of karma between those souls they were settling some karma and going through some lessons. And when the remote viewer was maybe well-intended, but they were looking at it from a third dimensional understanding of what was happening. They were just saying, oh, that person can that person and I'm gonna go save that person. I'm gonna go be a hero, right? Well, they were only seeing it from down here. They weren't seeing it from up here that there's a divine plan where these two are balancing out their karma where they're, they're role changing. We have all worn the black hats and we have all worn the white hats. We have all been the murderer. We have all been the hero. We have been every archetype that there is. We've all lived thousands of lives. We just don't remember because we're trying to remember it in here rather than remember it through our chakra systems. And it's in the Akashic records and you can access that with, with remote viewing as well. And so the remote viewers that were gonna step in, they were gonna help help they brought on that karma of that situation onto themselves right so again discernment is extraordinarily important okay because you don't want to step into a situation that really be none of your business you want to be able to see it from these higher dimensional states first before you go interjecting yourself in there right and so they brought karma on themselves and it was no bueno so we have a pretty strict rule um, I recommend never interfere unless you are directly contacted by the family. If you are directly contacted by the family asking for help, okay. But otherwise, you need to be operating in discernment. We need to train you in discernment. You need to get really connected to your higher self and say, what is the highest good that I can bring to this? Because as many of you know, as many of you here, that have had a connection to your psychic abilities, maybe it's in, maybe it's out, maybe it works all the time. You know that just because you have an ability or you know something does not mean that you should use it on every single situation, right? So discernment, just because your, your power is gonna go up, your abilities is gonna go up, your discernment has to go up of what do I do with this power? Because you guys are all gonna learn this, okay? Um, so let me see if there's um, any other questions. Can I explain heart center space? Yeah. So, um, so some people that do remote viewing, such as like military remote viewing, they're very focused on the mind. So like, whereas the style that I teach, it's very heart centered. So, um, it's, it's very much about going into your heart, going into the pure essence uh, of all, um, going into there. It's because 
there are some types of remote viewing that tends to have more ego involved in it and they don't get as accurate results because of it. So there really is no ego in the heart. <laughs> it's just pure love, right? There's really no judgment in the heart. It's pure love. Um, so that's why I like to go into the heart space. Um, okay. So we have a question. Um, in my Facebook post, I mentioned that we can connect with masters, angels with RV. Am I going to shed some light on that? Yes. So you guys can use this to connect to the ascended masters. Uh, you can talk to Jesus, Buddha, the white brotherhood, Kuan Yin. You can talk to Pleiadians, Syrians, um, what I affectionately call cheese friends, which are Lyrans. You can talk to the feline beings. You can connect to any and all of them. And through remote viewing, you can practice uh, identifying their energies as they come in. So for me, for example, when uh, I'm remote viewing Pleiadians, they feel cool. I see blue. To me, uh, they look like these kind of blue electric-ish beans. Um, they're very angelic feeling to me. Um, so that's how I personally discern Pleiadians. Um, if I'm remote viewing Syrians um, from Sirius, they uh, tend to have some kind of like fish aspect to them. Um, there's, a, there's definitely different configurations of fish beans that are on them, uh, whether they have scales here or there. Um, so I have lineage um, as a feline being. Much of my other lives have been spent in the Pleiades. I, I am on the Council of Nine, which is a Pleiadian council that is overseeing the whole, um, the whole star, star system. Um, there is another life where I am a Syrian ambassador. Syrians are phenomenal for taking um, technologies and breaking it down and making it very simple, which is one of those aspects that helps me to teach these things to you today. Um, you can harness all of the things that you are experiencing in your other lifetimes and you can bring them in and harness them in now and connect them to, to now. And so here's a funny thing that, um, that I've taught my remote viewers to do and it's so awesome. So have you ever wanted to read like a really big book, but you were like, man, I don't want to read this whole thing. Well, you can just remote view it. You can read the whole book in like an hour. And you can, so there's a different way of getting information uh, through remote viewing where you can download the vibration, the vibrational information into yourself through remote viewing rather than actually remote viewing the whole book. And this started happening to me naturally. Um, I read about someone else that this happened to. His name was Edgar Casey. Um, I think he lived about 100 years ago but he could also do this. And I was like, whoa, I'm not alone. Where I literally, someone could send me a book and I, I could just, I could do the things in the book, even though I never even read it. I never even opened up the first page. I thought, wow, this is so cool. I bet I could teach the students to do this. So I tasked the students one day blindly, of course, they had no idea what they were looking at and they downloaded books. So one of the things that you guys can do is the remote viewing can change the way that you access information because learning about it and just listening to me is a very slow process, but there's a much faster way to download and get information that you can just take it all in. Um, so telepathy happens very quickly, right? It's like that. It doesn't matter if you're in Japan, if you're in Antarctica, we could send each other a telepathic message and we would get it instantly. So there are superior forms of communication that we can tap into, that you can tap into. You can make a list of books that you would want to download um, in yourself. And you can, and you can say, um, for example, we download, one of the books we downloaded was um, A Course in Miracles. And the tasking was um, download the book A Course in Miracles and absorb all the vibration and information that is for our highest good. And so we each took from it what we each needed. And so it was fantastic. So really like remote viewing this, like what I'm teaching you or what I'm going to teach you in terms of the structure, you can use this for so many things. So many, so many things. Okay. Um, but yeah, you can totally, you, you can, you can talk to anybody. You can hang out with anybody. And it's so cool. The white brotherhood is amazing. Woo, they're so cool. Um, there's so many amazing, cool beans. Um, being connected, we've, we've connected to Tesla, 
<laughs> we've checked out his inventions. We've checked out lots of people. I've connected to Nostradamus. And in fact, Nostradamus had told me the way that he made the predictions was exactly the way that we look at a future probability. It wasn't because he was so adept of mind in his time. It was because he was seeing the future uh, probability from where he was. And so it's really cool. You guys, you guys can do all of that. Okay. Let's see. So is there any other questions before we move on? Um, oh, someone said, um, can I describe more about the Syrians? Yeah. Um, Syrians are so cool. I had a lifetime here um, in uh, Syria where I had a miss, or sorry, connected to the Syrians. Um, I had a mystery school here, and shocker, in one of my previous lifetimes. And um, we, we did, we had a lot of connection with Syrian teachings. And so Syrians are very connected to advanced technology, well, what we would consider advanced technologies, but they are very good at taking complicated technologies and breaking them down and making them very simple and succinct to understand. And so I've come to earth uh, many times as a Syrian ambassador where I've carried some of those things forth. But I've also spent many lifetimes as a feline being. Um, and you guys can find your own galactic lineages as well, where I can task you guys blindly, of course, and I'll explain what blindly means later, to connect to your galactic heritage, to connect to your... Oh no, someone came on mute. Okay, I'm gonna mute you, okay? Okay, sorry about that, guys. Um, yeah, so you guys can connect to your galactic family, your galactic heritage, your galactic history, and know that you're doing it for real and not just making it up. So, okay, so we've got about two hours left, and I really want to jump into the structure, if that's okay. And so this is, this is where it's going to be like, okay, write this, write that. So um, let's begin with that aspect, and I'll answer more questions after class, too. All right, so grab your paper. By the way, Syrians are awesome. You totally wanna, you totally wanna hang out with them. Pleiadians are awesome. <laughs> okay, so Mario just posted the theta waves in the chat box. Um, we use that one all the time. It's great. Can I tell you about Lyrans? Yes, I, I, I love Lyrans, we're friends. I can show you a video of where I learned my remote viewing training. Um, I learned in a class of 15 other people when I was in Washington and um, it, it was insanely amazing. They're, they're lovely, they're funny, they're intelligent. I had actually, they interviewed me um, after I had done my remote viewing training, because I had done so extraordinarily well, they wanted me to talk about the remote viewing that I had done because it was connecting to the Lyrans, which I affectionately call cheese friends. I will post that video for you guys to watch um, after class if you wanna see that, um, that, that I did. Um, Amanda's asking, can we talk to mythological creatures? Yes, yes, totally. So you might think that dragons are mythological, but they're not. There's, there's real dragons. Um, you can totally talk to them. Um, but one of the things is I want you guys to grow in your discernment because how will you know if you are remote viewing a story or if you're remote viewing the truth, right? Because sometimes we could be remote viewing something and it's someone's perspective. And so that's part of the training that I'm going to help you guys develop is that discernment. Because as I said, the discernment is so important. You got to know who you're talking to. Like, for example, whenever there's a cheese friend around or a Lyran, it's giggly, it's fun, it's happy, it's playfulness, it's joyfulness. Um, and they're like these short little beans and they're white. Um, and they're brilliant. They're, they're brilliant. They make things, they build things. They're fantastic. Um, so... Yeah, you can talk to, to you can talk to gods and goddesses. We've remote viewed Thor. We've hung out with Thor. Um, we've remote viewed Jesus. We've remote viewed Buddha. We've remote viewed so many different beings. 
Arcturians are awesome also. And you guys can do this too. And so that's what makes me so excited. Okay, so everyone, you wanna get your, you make sure that you've got the binaural beat stuff that, that Mario's posted for us. And so I'm gonna explain this one page at a time. And I know you're gonna be like, what the heck? Why, do I, why am I doing this report? But just trust me. If you trust me and you do this process, it's gonna work, okay? It does work, it's proven to work, it works for everybody. You are not an exception. You're not the one person that this doesn't work for, okay? I promise you, if you're here, you can do this. Okay, so make sure you've got your paper, make sure you got your pen. And you know what? It's totally normal to feel like, oh my goodness, am I even doing this right? So that's your, that's your logical mind that's going to want to control the process. It's going to say, I want to know if I'm doing it right. And so just let, you know what, acknowledge that part of your mind and just let it go. Just let it go. It doesn't matter if, you know, because you're practicing. And that's all that matters is you're learning and you're practicing and you're on your path to self mastery. And the more you do this, it's going to build your self confidence and your sensing abilities. Okay. All right. So hopefully everyone's got paper and they've got more than one pen just in case they need it. All right. So we're going to begin with the first page. So on our first page in the upper right hand corner, I would like for you to make up a super awesome code name. So your own unique, super cool, super awesome code name. It can be anything that you want it to be. All right, so I'm going to give you a minute to do that. It's got to be a good one, guys, because you're going to be writing it a lot because you're going to be doing a lot of reports. All right. After you've made up your secret code name that you've written in the upper right hand side of the paper, I would like for you to write down the time and the date. So for me, I would put my code name. I would put the time and the date. So I would say for me, it's 2.40 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So I would put MST and I would put the date underneath of that. So code name, time, time zone, date. Okay. So let me know when you've completed that. So again, it's code name in the upper right, the time and time zone, and then the date under that. All right. Okay, cool. So easy, right? All right. So now in the middle top of the page, so the top of the page, so right up in the middle top, I want you to put ES and PS. ES and PS. And what that stands for is emotional state and physical state. Okay. And then after you put ES and PS, I want you to fill in what it, what your emotional state is. What is your physical state? So your emotional state might be like happy, excited, nervous. Um, your physical state might be like relaxed. It might be hot, sweaty cold. So list all of your physical state and all of your emotional state. You got to just let it out. And the reason we're doing this is because we want to let go of what's going on. So this is part of the process of us letting it go, letting go of those identifications. So let it out. Let out your emotional state and your physical state. Now, 
you never really want to do remote viewing if you're like depressed and like crying. You want to be in a generally good state when you do it. So just a heads up for that. Probably not going to be remote viewing if you get a migraine. Okay, so everyone's got that done. Now in the left hand corner, you're gonna have what is called your remote viewing tag number, okay? And so I'm gonna give you a remote viewing tag number for you to write in the upper left hand side. This is for example purposes only. This is not an actual assigned number. This is a made up number for the sake of showing you an outline report. And so that number, you're gonna write four digits and four digits. So it's gonna look just like this, four digits and then four digits. So the number is 3768-2101. Again, that is 3768-2101. 3768-2101. And it should look just like that top, four digits, lower four digits. And then below that, I want you to put V, V, V as in Victor, B as in boy. So what is that V, B about? Well, V, B means viewer blind. And viewer blind is the only way that we remote view. And viewer blind means that you, the viewer, have no clue what you are gonna remote view. You've not been told. You've not been given an idea, nothing. All you're given is that number, that's it, nothing else. So viewer's blind, okay, that's what that means. All right, so now we're gonna move on to something that is so cool, you're gonna love this. Um, it's an ideogram squiggle, and I'm gonna show you how to make one, okay? So your ideogram squiggle, it is going to be um, a squiggle that you make, but before you make it, I wanna to explain to you what it is. So this eight digit number, there is an invisible arrow attached to that. And it's pointing your consciousness to go look at something. Now somewhere else, I, as the tasker, I'm the tasker, okay? So I'm known as the tasker. I've written that number down, 37682101. And I'm creating an arrow to point your consciousness to go check that thing out. So I could say, describe Atlantis at its height of civilization. So what I've done is as the tasker, I've married this intention to this number. Describe Atlantis at the height of the height of um, the height of its civilization. And so when you, the remote viewer, are given what's known as the tag number, you're just given the number. That's it. So you don't know what me as the tasker have assigned to that number. So that's how we keep you VB, viewer blind. So you're not front loaded in any way to know what you're remote viewing. Well, why do we do that? Well, the reason that we do that is, is because if I told you, describe Atlantis at the height of its civilization, your imagination is gonna go wild. And so rather than actually sensing, and using the innate abilities that lay within you, you're gonna make stuff up based upon what your mind thinks Atlantis is. And so rather than actually truly going psychically to Atlantis, rather than actually truly sensing that, you're gonna make up a story based on your preconceived notions of what you think Atlantis is. And so this is why this brings the efficacy to remote viewing. This is how we have efficacy in what we do because 
you don't know what you're doing. You're just given the number. I'm going to teach you a protocol on how to sense and how to bring data forward. So you see this, there's the unconscious here, then you have the subconscious, and then you have the conscious mind. And so this training is going to help you be like a pearl diver where you're going to go down through those layers of consciousness. You're going to grab a pearl and you're going to bring it up. And I'm going to teach you how to do that. So you're, you're actually circumventing the, the mind aspect and you're, you're going to go in very deep, right? Okay. So this ideogram, okay, back to the ideogram. So an ideogram is a squiggle that you're going to make very fast. It's going to come out of you um, like lightning. So it's not going to be like, it's not going to be like this. Okay. It's not going to be like, Ooh, I'm making a squiggle and I want it to go like that. It needs to come out of you. Like, like you just put your finger in a socket like that. See how crazy that was, how fast that was. I wanted to come out really fast. Do, 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 do. Okay. So it's got to come out of you like a bolt of lightning. Well, why? Okay, so you're gonna make that, after you write the number down, you're gonna make a fast squiggle right next to the number. You're gonna make a fast squiggle. It's gotta be fast, it's gotta be fast, okay? Now, what the heck is that about? Well, imagine you were telling a story, the whole story exists in that squiggle. That story is a vibrational representation of the whole story. And as you're remote viewing, you're gonna use your pen and you're gonna use a technique called probing and you're gonna put your pen on that ideogram in different areas to probe it for sensory information. And so this is gonna be your link. This is your link to the invisible directive that's attached to this number. So we'll, we'll talk more about that later. Okay, so you've done that. Now I want you to make a line under the page just like this. And then I want you to put T, T for transit. So T means transit. What you just made was a transit line. Okay. And that's it for page one. Now, one thing that, that, that could be helpful that you should write down on page one is your intention because your intention is everything. So I want you to write down there, I will get only what the tasker wants me to get. I will get only what the tasker wants me to get. And I don't want you to just write it. I want you to believe it. I want you to believe it through and through. I will get only what the tasker wants me to get. So you are setting your intention to focus. I want you to focus like a laser. Okay, I will get only what the tasker wants me to get. So you're setting your intention. So this is the transit page. This was page one. Pretty simple, right? So every time you do a remote viewing report, you're gonna do a page one, a page two, page three, four, five, I'm going to teach you how to do all the pages. Okay. So this is what your page one report looks like. Okay. You can set that one aside. You can use it for a guide when you actually do your first remote viewing today. Okay. All right. Page two is a little bit long. Okay. So bear with me. All right. Does anyone have questions on page one or can we move on to page two? Give me a thumbs up if it's okay to move on. Okay. All right. Thank you guys. All right. Good job. All right. We're going to move on to page two. Now go ahead and um, don't make note on this page because on, on your actual report page, well, I guess you could, but don't write anything on there because you're going to use your template report that you're getting taught to make right now because after I'm done teaching you this, you're actually going to do a remote, a real remote viewing. And you're going to use this protocol, the, these pages. You're going you're gonna to basically use this as a template to do your own remote viewing. 
okay, which I'm gonna task you to after you've learned this, okay? So don't, you know, don't put too much on the page, only put on the page what I'm showing you, okay? Okay, so next page is S in the middle, two. So this is page two, S means scan. S is short for scan, so two, S two, just like that, okay? And then in the upper left-hand corner, I want you to write the number down again. So go ahead and write the number down again. The eight digit number goes in the upper left-hand side. You're gonna write it again. And you're gonna make another fast ideogram squiggle next to it. So eight digit number, fast ideogram squiggle. Okay. And this is for the second page. So eight digit number, fast ideogram squiggle. All right. Now, where the two is, I want you to put an A, a B, and an AOL. So A should be near the top, B is near the middle, and AOL is near the bottom. And that, that's under where there's the two. So A, B, and AOL, okay? Well, what is AOL? AOL means analytical overlay. And you're going to get real familiar with what AOL is. All right, so you all got that? Under two, it's A, B, AOL. All right, now where you've got your ideogram squiggle and your eight digit number, I want you to put C at the top and D in the middle. So C for cat, D for dog. All right, hopefully you all got that part done. All right, so now we're gonna move forward. So now, what is section A about? We're gonna do A first. A is about describing your ideogram squiggle. So, well, how do you do that? Well, what I want you to do is, so if you're right-handed, um, I want you to take your left pointer finger and I want you to put your pointer finger on your ideogram squiggle, and I want you to trace the outline with your finger. So just go ahead and put it on there. I want you to trace it. Trace it all the way through with your non-dominant hand. And then I want you to describe it in the section A. It could say, um, goes and loops down to the right, sharp turn to the left, it downward slants, it jets up towards the right, it loops again to the left and circles up to the right. So I want you to go ahead and describe your ideogram squiggle as you trace it with your non-dominant hand and write that under section A. So this is what the page looks like. Okay. So under the two section, you've got A, B, and AOL. And under your ideogram squiggle and the eight digit number, you have C for cat and D for dog. And you guys are doing fantastic so far. All right, so hopefully you're done with section A. If you are, give me a thumbs up so I know that I can move forward. Okay. All right, you guys are fast. Good job. I like that. Okay, section B for boy. All right, so we're moving on from A, now we're going to B. Now, for section B, we're gonna need a few extra pieces of paper, okay? So grab a blank sheet of paper, grab several, <laughs> several blank, blank pieces of paper, okay? All 
All right, so this area, section B, is for the gestalts. And when we learn about remote viewing, there is archetypes, there's symbols, and then there's words. Well, symbols are a lot easier to communicate quickly rather than having to find a vocabulary for something. And so we like to use gestalts, which are basically another word for symbols, um, to describe some of the things that come up to us right away when we're probing. Um, remember I talked about probing? Well, we're probing our ideogram squiggle, right? And so I'm going to teach you what those major gestalts are, and we're going to try and get them deep into your memory, okay? Into, into your reflex, reflexive zone. I want these to come out very fast for you. So the first one that we are going to do is surface, okay? And so in this B section, I would like for you to make, see that flat dash right there? That flat dash, that is the symbol for a surface, okay? And I want you to take a, piece, a separate piece of paper, a blank piece of paper, I want you to write surface at the top, and I want you to make a flat dash next to it. And I want you to fill the whole page with dashes. And I want you to say surface, 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 surface. I want you, every single time you make a dash, I want you to fill the whole page and say surface over and over because I want it to really get deep into your mind, okay? Surface, 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 surface. So fill up that whole page give me a thumbs up when you are done. And you can do this fast, just like choo, choo, choo. Okay. All right. And if some of you finish faster than others, just start working on the second half of the page or flip the page over and do it on that side too. So again, um, surface, this is a symbol for surface and you're just gonna fill it up with surface. And it can come out fast, it can be sloppy, that's okay. All right, so it looks like most of you are done. So really good job. Make sure that you write the symbol surface in your B section, in your gestalt section. So put the, the, little, the little surface symbol there. Now we're gonna move on to the subject symbol, okay? So the subject symbol looks like this. It looks like a uppercase I or like a cursive uppercase I. You're gonna put that under the B section. And then I want you to grab a fresh sheet of paper I want you to write subject at the at the top and make a little subject. And then I want you to fill the page and subject, 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 subject. I want you to say it out loud as you do it to yourself. Subject, 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 subject. I want it to get get automatic. So subject, subject, subject. And then let me know when you're done. If you're a fast writer, you can do the backside too while you're waiting for everyone else. And then give me a nice thumbs up when you're done so I don't keep anybody waiting. You guys are doing fantastic so far. 
you guys are going at a really good pace, so good job. All right, next one. It's gonna be this symbol and it means liquid. So it's a horizontal squiggle from left to right or right to left, however you prefer. Go ahead and put it under your B section for gasalt, and that's the symbol for liquid. And then grab a blank sheet of paper. And I'd like for you to write liquid at the top and then make your, your water symbol. And then I want you to fill the whole page with that symbol. And each time I want you to say liquid, 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 liquid. As you are writing the liquid symbol, say liquid, 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 over and over and over, okay? And if you're a fast writer, go ahead and do the back also while you're waiting for the slower writers to, to finish, okay? And then give me a nice thumbs up or type the done in the box so that I don't keep you guys waiting. Some of you are going to be faster writers than others, and that's okay. Liquid, 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 liquid. Okay, we're gonna move on to the next one. This happens to be my favorite one. Uh, it's my favorite because I am super sensitive to energy. So this is the energy symbol right there. So it's a zigzaggy vertical symbol. And put that under your section B, that's the symbol for energy. Grab a fresh sheet of paper like for you to write energy at the top, make a zigzaggy energy symbol that's vertical. And I want you to fill the whole page with energy symbol. And I want you to say it over and over. Energy, 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 energy. And it's totally okay if it's sloppy. I mean, look at mine. Woo, it's everywhere. But I filled it. So that's what's important. And then let me know when you're done and we'll move on to the next one. Energy, 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 energy. Y'all got roommates. I'm sure you're sounding a little crazy about now. <laughs> Uh, just tell them you're like chanting some mantra or something. I don't know. <laughs> All right, give me a nice thumbs up when you are done with the energy. Okay. <laughs> All right, fantastic job. All right, we're gonna move on now to the next one. The next one is a mountain. And it looks just like a mountain. That's what it looks like. 
super, super basic mountain. Put it under G for gasalts. Then I want you to grab a fresh sheet of paper. I want you to write mountain at the top. I want you to draw a mountain symbol next to it. And I want you to fill the page with mountains. And you know what? Sometimes they look a little spiky and sometimes they look round and it doesn't matter. Just let it come out however the mountain wants to come out. But make sure that you're saying mountain, 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 mountain every, every time you do it. <laughs> Mountain, 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 mountain. You guys are doing awesome. We're almost through section B. We only got two left and then we can move on. All right, let me know when you're done. All right, Carrie's done. Good job. Okay. All right, thank you guys for letting me know. Mountains and mountains and more mountains. Okay. Next one. See this 90 degree angle? That is the symbol for structure. So, well, what's a structure? Well, it's something that's man made or it's alien made, well, it's a structure. It's something that was built and it wasn't built by nature. So that 90 degree angle, um, go ahead and make one of those and stick it in the B section for your gasalts. Grab a fresh piece of paper, write structure at the top, make your structure symbol, and then go ahead and fill your page and say structure, 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 structure. And you know, sometimes mine come out backwards and you know what, that's okay. As long as you get the 90 degree angle part, it's, it's all good, okay? Structure, 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 structure. That one doesn't really roll off the tongue, does it? It's not as fun to say as energy. I don't know, I think I'm biased towards the energy one maybe. That one's way more fun. All right, let me know when you're done. Oh, you guys are so fast. You guys are on point, crushing it. You guys are paying attention. You guys are killing it. I knew I think you accidentally started sharing your screen with us. I'm going to stop sharing your screen. <laughs> I think that was an accident. Maybe like a butt dial. Totally butt dialed the computer. Okay. All right. So the last one. is PP. Well, what the heck is PP? Well, grab a blank piece of paper and write this big long word on the top, paraphysical. Paraphysical and make a PP next to it. And then I want you to fill the page with PPs. 
So PP means is short for paraphysical. So try saying that one fast. Paraphysical, 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 paraphysical. It's like a workout for your mouth. Paraphysical, 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 paraphysical. Feel it. I bet this is like rap training. You say it fast enough. <laughs> Maybe get a good rhythm going. Paraphysical, paraphysical, paraphysical. So let me know when you're done with the paraphysical. Let's get physical, physical, paraphysical. I don't think I can listen to that song now. Never not change the lyrics to paraphysical. <laughs> okay. So PP means paraphysical. Well, what's a paraphysical? Well, they don't got a physical body. So maybe they took their physical body off. All right, so that concludes section B for boy, okay? That is your gestalts, those are symbols. You're gonna get very familiar with those symbols, okay? I'm gonna run you through a very tiny drill, okay? So go ahead and grab a blank piece of paper. And I am going to say structure, mountain, energy, surface, subject, not that fast though. And you're gonna write the symbol on the piece of paper as I'm saying them, okay? And so this is gonna help you, um, this is gonna help you get it in, get it in there that that symbol and so mario put a nice definition up definition of paraphysical resembling physical phenomena but without recognizable physical uh physical um cause paraphysical phenomena and levitation telekinesis <laughs> okay um all right so here we go a little drill for you so I want you to write down the symbol for structure. Now energy. Now surface. Subject. Paraphysical. Liquid. Mountain. Subject, surface, liquid, energy, structure, mountain, paraphysical, liquid, water, Liquid is water, I tricked you guys. All right, subject, energy, mountain, paraphysical, surface, energy, mountain, subject, liquid, Structure, paraphysical, structure, surface, structure, surface.
surface, structure, energy, structure, mountain, structure, liquid, structure, paraphysical, structure, surface, structure, energy, mountain, energy, mountain, liquid, mountain, subject, mountain, surface, mountain, paraphysical, mountain, structure, energy, mountain, energy, structure, energy, paraphysical, energy, liquid, energy, subject, energy, surface, liquid, energy, liquid, subject, liquid, surface. If you lost track, just jump back on. Liquid mountain, liquid structure, liquid paraphysical, liquid subject, liquid energy, liquid mountain. Subject surface, subject liquid, subject energy, subject mountain, subject structure, subject paraphysical, surface energy, surface mountain, surface structure, surface paraphysical, surface subject, surface. Okay, how's that feeling? Am I going too fast or are you, you keeping up? Ish? It's going okay? All right, should we do, should we keep doing some? So it comes out till we, till it feels natural. We want to do it till it feels natural. Okay, we'll, we'll keep doing them. All right, here we go. Surface. Subject. Liquid. Energy. Mountain. Subject. Mountain. Structure. Paraphysical. Subject. Mountain. Surface. Structure. Liquid. Paraphysical. Energy. Surface. Mountain. Structure. Paraphysical. Subject. Structure. Liquid. Mountain. Energy. Paraphysical. Subject. Liquid. Surface. Mountain. Structure. Energy. Liquid. Subject. Mountain. Structure. Surface. Paraphysical. Subject. Mountain. Structure. Paraphysical. Liquid. Subject. Energy. Surface. Mountain. Subject. Surface. Energy. Liquid. Paraphysical. How did that round feel? Oh, that's a lot of thumbs up. Okay, good. You guys are getting it. Better. Okay, let's do it one more time. I want it to be great. Okay, here we go. Subject. Liquid. Subject. Surface. Subject. Energy. 
subject, mountain, subject, structure, subject, paraphysical, subject, surface, mountain, structure, energy, liquid, surface, paraphysical, subject, structure, mountain, energy, liquid, subject, paraphysical, structure, mountain, subject, surface, paraphysical, energy, subject, energy, mountain, energy, structure, energy, paraphysical, energy, surface. Okay, how did that one feel? It's good. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, you guys are doing a great job. All right, so that is that wraps up and concludes section B. So fantastic job on section B. And so the reason that we want to really get you familiar with what those are is as you're doing your report, which we're going to get into next on section C, as you're putting your pen, which is called probing, the ideogram squiggle you made, you're making contact with the target. And you might sense, oh, there's a mountain. So you're going to quickly make a mountain under section B. You're going to throw a mountain under there. Or you're going to be like, whoa, there's a subject. You're going to make a quick symbol for a subject. Or you're going to be like, oh, there's definitely energy. You're going to make an energy symbol. So it helps you communicate like really fast what it is that you're sensing without having to go into a language. So that's what the symbols help do. So fantastic job. You guys move through the symbols very quickly. You, you all like were paying attention. You did fantastic. Um, that section can take a long time sometimes, but you guys did it really, really well. So thank you so much for that. All right, we're going to move on to my favorite section, which is C. So C for cat. So C. All right, so under C, you can go ahead and write five senses, but there's actually more than five. We know that. But you can put five senses there if you like and write down describe, don't identify. So under the C section, you can put parentheses and you can say five senses, describe, don't identify. So let me know once you've written that down. So five senses, describe, don't identify. Or you could put all senses, all senses described don't identify because there's actually more than five and I'll talk to you about those. All right, and then I want you to go to your AOL section, which means analytical overlay. And I wrote down, if you do identify, write it here. <laughs> so if you do identify, write it here under the AOL. So I'm going to give you some examples for you to write down under your C section, okay? Um, smell, write down smell, taste, touch, um, see, hear, emotionally feel. And so the section C, this is really the heart of remote viewing because what we're doing is we're sensing. Because as we go into the void, we merge with the target because we 
are the target that we are viewing. We're just expanding our consciousness to merge with the target. So as we merge with it, we want to describe with descriptors what we are experiencing in our own self. And so what am I seeing? What's playing in the movie of my mind's eye? What am I hearing? What, what do I, is it rough? What am I touching? Is it rough? Is it smooth? Is it wet? Is it dry? Um, so these descriptors, um, does it look black? Does it look white? Does it look red? Does it look gray? Um, what do I taste? Is it sweet? Is it sour? Um, is it salty? It, does this, what is the smell? Um, what do I feel? What are my emotions? As I'm connected with this remote viewing, am I excited? Am I nervous? Am I scared? Am I excited? Am I laughing? Am I nervous? Am I sweating? And so your physical body will create physical reactions as you become one with your remote viewing targets. So my first remote viewing target that I ever did was, um, well, I was given the eight digit number and I felt like my arms wanted to go out to the sides and they felt so tired and I was physically exerted and I was pouring sweat and I felt like I was a weightlifter and I was like holding these weights with my arms and I was standing in kind of like this butterfly position. And then all of a sudden I had a sigh of relief as if I like, I achieved something. I felt celebration inside of myself and excitement. And then I was like, yeah, I did it. Well, so I made my remote viewing report and then I had to turn into my teacher. Well, what did I remote view? And it was exactly that. And I was like, but why was I sweating? I'm not a sweaty person. Like I'm not a person that sweats a lot. Um, and that's because you merge with the target and your physical body will emulate that which you are connecting to in the target or object objective is another word. You don't have to use target. You can use the word objective. So in the C in the section C, you're going to put all of your sensory data. So what do I see? What do I hear? What do I smell? What do I taste? And you're going to put descriptors in there. And so if you're not accustomed to describing things, you're going to get really good at describing things. And so one of the exercises you can do is walk around your house and start describing things. You could say um, blue, small, big, um, loud, quiet. Um, you can find uh, shiny, red. So I'm gonna give you an example of an AOL now, okay? So you're doing your remote viewing and you're sensing the data from within. So you go into the void, you're very meditative, you go into the void, you're listening to your theta beats. And as you're doing that, you're waiting to feel a sensation in your body. Maybe you feel energy rocking you from side to side. It's a very, very gentle flowing energy moving from left to right. We'll write that down. Say, uh, you would write energy under the B section and under C, you would put um, energy flow left to right. Um, maybe you feel like there's something in your mouth or like there's a breathing, something in the mouth. You could put something in the mouth. Maybe you feel a pressure, atmospheric pressure change on your body. Well, you could put atmospheric pressure change on body, which that does happen when you're going up in space and also when you're going in the depths of the ocean. They feel very similar because you, you do feel the pressure change. So you, your body does, can react to that stuff. Um, so, which of course is amazing. And, and if you ever want to study anything about healing, because this is the same place that you can go in to uh, connect to healing things. Um, so the void is the same place that you, that miracles are made and, and all of that, or miracles come about also. So we can talk more about that in a future class. Um, but so section C is you're in the void, you've removed thought, you're withholding thought, you're keeping thought out there, you're just patiently waiting in the void. You're just waiting. You're so quiet. And you're just saying, what am I sensing in my body? And you're just waiting to feel what you sense come up in your body. And it's gonna be gentle. 
and you're going to, maybe you're going to see something come across your mind's eye. Maybe you're going to feel like, well, it kind of feels like there's a big mountain right here. I, I, I thought I, hop, I heard birds or something, right? And so every single piece of sensory data that you get, you got to write it down. You've got to write every single piece down. Even if it is you just saw your kitchen sink, write it down. Every single piece of data you get. And so it's kind of like there's a, there's a black hole right here and you're gonna stick your hand in there, in that black hole and you're gonna reach down and you're gonna sense something and you're gonna pull it out. And say for example, I reach down and there's something slimy and it's got fins. Well, I've got to write down on my paper under C, slimy has fins. So when I write it down on paper, I'm letting it go. So here is the next biggest, most important step in remote viewing. This is so super important. So make sure that you pay attention to this part, okay? This is super, super, super important. So after you've written down slimy and has fins, you gotta let it go. You gotta let it go. That means you gotta detach yourself from that sensory data that you just brought in completely. So what remote viewing is like, is like, imagine a bunch of puzzle pieces in front of you and each one of them is sensory data. And what you're doing is you're reaching out and you're grabbing one of those sensory puzzle pieces, you're pulling it in and you're writing it down. You're grabbing another one, you're pulling it in, you're writing it down. You're not trying to construct what you're, what you're, you're not trying to figure anything out. You're not trying to construct anything. That part will come later. But it's very important for the success of your remote viewing that you let the information go and that you only stay in a sensory state at that time. So this is imperative. And now let's run through a scenario. So say I reach down and I feel something slimy and it's got fins and I'm like, okay, I'm going to write it on my paper, slimy and has fins. If I don't completely drop it and go back into the void, because every time you send sensory data, you go back to the void. You got to let it go. You got to let everything go. You got to let the sensory data that you just got, let it go. You got to become nothing again. It's truly. Truly, truly. And this is what makes remote viewers great, is the ability to detach and not try and create a story. And I'm gonna give you an example of AOL in creating a story. So say I got slimy fins and I wrote it down on my paper. Well, if I didn't actually drop it and go into the void and become nothing again and let it go, when I go back to dip my hand into that black hole, I just brought the fish back in with me. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just keep describing a fish. I'm gonna be like, well, it's definitely a fish. And then my brain's gonna be like, oh yeah, it's a carp. Uh, oh, there's a fishing boat. Look, now there's a fishing boat. Oh, this person's definitely fishing. And so all of that is just confabulating a story, okay? So all of that is confabulation and I want you guys to avoid that. Um, so that's what AOL is. AOL is identifications. So when you've tried to identify something rather than describe it. So I'm going to give you another example. Say I am, um, say that I am sensing, I'm, I'm putting my pen to, to prod into my ideogram and I'm prodding for information and I'm like, okay, red, round, small, fits in the palm of my hand. Um, my brain, so here's, here's where the brain is, is a sneaky little bugger. So you're grabbing sensory descriptive information, like red, round, small, fits in the palm of the hand. Well, the brain is like, well, I'm gonna interrupt. Oh, you've got three puzzle pieces there. Well, I know what this is, it's an apple. And it's like, so the brain just tried to make a logical deduction it tried to interrupt the sensory process. And that's what an AOL is. So under my AOL, I would put AOL Apple 
is analytical overlay, where my logical brain tried to interrupt my sensing process and identify that which I was remote viewing. And so that exactly is what an AOL is. Okay. And so the reason that we have to let go of each piece of sensory data as we're accepting it, as it comes in. So maybe I taste something sweet. Maybe I smell something fresh. Um, maybe it feels hard. Maybe it looks shiny. And so I'm describing it. But if I hold on to the fact that I think it's an apple, I'm just going to start describing an apple. And I've now lost all objectivity as to what it actually is. It could have been a red balloon. It could have been, it could have been a, a red ball. It could have been something else entirely. But because um, I held on to that sensory data, my remote viewing would then go a sharp downward turn in accuracy. It would go very down. And so um, once you've made an identification, declare it in the AOL and drop your pen. So write down AOL, write down Apple, drop the pen. Because what you're doing is you're training yourself that I don't want to AOL. I want to describe. I don't want to identify. And this is the part of ourself that is judgmental. So this is going to help with our judgmentalness because judgmental aspect of us wants to, oh, I know what this is. So every time we Heather, get... Heather, is this also a way to... Uh... Uh, Heather, is this also the way to let it go or is there any other way people can let go? Okay, so letting go of an AOL is you would write that AOL down. So you would write down apple or fish or whatever it is that you've identified rather than described. So identifications are AOLs, right? Descriptions go under what you're sensing. So you would let it go through AOL. So you would write down Apple and you would drop your pen under AOL and you would let it go. So then after you've done that, then I want you to take a moment. You can do a movement exercise. You can move your hands. You could readjust your body. You could wiggle yourself around. Okay, just readjust yourself, all right? And then you're gonna go back into the void. The void is no thought, no identification, no time, no place, nowhere. You're just there and you're withholding thought. And so this is where the meditative aspect comes in. You've got to withhold thought and just accept whatever comes up. Now, here is another extremely important thing for you to do. So, sorry, Dips, did you have another question? No, just that. Okay. Okay. So, it's, so it's extremely, extremely important that um, you write down every single thing that comes in. If you've thought it, you got to write it. If it came up to you, you got to write it. Because what will happen is if you try and hold it in, it's going to haunt you. And, it's, and you don't yet know what is accurate and what is inaccurate. So the process of writing it down releases it, okay? So it doesn't matter what it is. If it was, so maybe it's a memory of something that happened, write it down. Whatever it is, you've got to write it down. And the reason is, is because if you write everything down, when I give you the feedback to show you what it is that you remote viewed, we can then go through the report and you can circle what you got accurate. But a lot of times when students are first learning to do this, they have no idea between what is accurate and what is inaccurate. And so with remote viewing, you have to be willing to be a fool. You have to be willing just to write it all down. Every single thing, the kitchen sink, whatever comes to you. But you're not writing from your brain. You're writing, what do I sense? So there needs to be the aspect of going into the void. You've got to go into the void. So. Going into the void means you're just waiting there to see what am I sensing in my body. And at first, you'll notice energy moving in a certain pattern. You'll notice energy moving around in your body. 
And so that's what you want to write down is you want to write down what are you sensing under the section C. And you're going to have, you should have like at least 30 things written down on every single page uh, under your C section. There should be a lot of data there, a lot. If you're not letting the data out, that means you're withholding, you're judging, and you're trying to control the narrative because the logical mind likes to be in charge. The logical mind likes to interrupt and the logical mind wants to know what's going on. It doesn't like giving up control easily. And so this is going to be a training process. And this is why I call this self mastery, because you're going to, by doing this process, it's going to help you put the logical mind aside and go into the true authentic sensing of yourself. And that part of yourself is extremely intelligent. It is connected to everything everywhere. It is the, the highest and most intelligent aspect of yourself. Okay. So that is section C. Does anyone have any questions on A, B, C, or AOL? If so, let me know in the chat box. And if you're good, then give me a thumbs up. Heather, can you recap A through uh, yes. D? Just to yes. Okay, well, I'll, I'll tell you what D is right now. So D is a sketch. So D is you're just going to make a simple sketch of what is going on. So for D, you're going to put sketch. Can you repeat A once? Yeah, I'll go through all of them one more time. I'll paraphrase. So A is where you have your non-dominant hand tracing your ideogram squiggle with your finger and you are describing your ideogram squiggle. So you could say curves down, loops up, jets to the right, slants to the left, loops again downward, turns upward to the right and loops up. So you're just describing it in the A section while your non-dominant hand is tracing the ideogram. Section B is for your gestalts, which you have the symbol for um, surface, subject, liquid, energy, mountain, structure, and paraphysical. Um, section C is for your sensings. Describe, don't identify. What do I see? What do I hear? What do I smell? What do I taste? What do I emotionally feel? Section D is for your sketch, and your AOL is for your identifications. So if you've identified, you put it there, you write it down, you drop your pen, you move your body, you resituate yourself, and you let it go. Can you talk a bit about the purpose for doing section A? Um, it just helps you, it helps you get into the process of expressing. Um, process A will, it helps you connect to the target and start describing the target. So by describing the way the line moves and tracing it with your finger, it's helping you get into the process of describing. So how do you use the symbols in B? So when you make a report for your page, You'll put the eight digit number in the upper left hand corner. You'll make your ideogram squiggle next to it. You'll have an S and a two, because this is page two. And you'll do A, B, A, O, L, and then C, D set up, just like I showed you. I'll show you again. So again, under two, you have A, B, A, O, L. And under the eight digit number, you have C and D, right? And then, as you're sensing, as you're prodding your ideogram, because through this whole process, while you're in the void, you're gonna use your pen tip and you're gonna connect it with your ideogram, just like that. And you're gonna have like a zillion dots all over your ideogram from prodding it, because every time you prod it, you're making connection to, to that, right? And so maybe you're, you're prodding it and you're like, whoa, I sense there's a mountain. So you're gonna put the mountain symbol under B. And you're like, well, maybe I sense a subject. You're gonna put the subject symbol under B. So B is for your gestalt symbols. You're gonna to toss those in there, okay? 
And it doesn't matter if you do section B first or section C first. Just make sure that if you do section C first, go back and fill out section B. It, it really doesn't matter as long as it's there. Okay, any other questions on the structure of this page or the methodology of this? And if you feel like you got it, give me a thumbs up and we can move on. Okay. All right, really good job, you guys. You guys are doing fantastic. All right, so that page was the hardest part. That was the hardest part for sure. All right, so um, there's gonna be an S3. So go ahead and grab a piece of paper and do S3. So eight digit number, ideogram squiggle, S in the middle, three. And I want you to set it up the exact same way. So under the three, you're gonna put A, B, A, O, L. And then under the eight digit numbers, you're gonna put C for cat and D for dog. And you already know what A, B, C, D, A, O, L stand for, so I don't have to go over those again. Now the fourth page of your report, go ahead and grab a piece of paper and I want you to put the eight digit number again in the left hand side. I want you to do another ideogram squiggle. I want you to put an S and I want you to put a four. And I want you to put again the A, B, C, D, and A, O, L on there, just the same. And again, you already know what A, A is for describing your ideogram squiggle. B is going to be where you're going to fill in your gestalt. C is for describing, not identifying, your senses. D is for your sketch, and A, O, L is where you're going to drop your identifications. So that's S4. And so you're going to have an ideogram on every on the first page which was the transit page on s2 s3 and s4 you make a new ideogram for each of those and your ideograms are always going to look spontaneous they're always going to be spontaneous sometimes they might look the same sometimes they might look different but you just want to make sure you're doing it really fast let it out like lightning okay now we're going to move on to the very last page of the report And all of these pages cover one remote viewing number. So it's the same number used for all the pages. All right, here's the last page. And you guys are gonna love this because it's super easy. All right. So this is a general scan. So you can put GS and it's page five. So GS goes in the middle and then five. And then what I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you to put S2, S3, S4, just like this. S2, S3, S4. Okay. So you've got three columns, an S2 column, an S3 column, and an S4 column. And this is called general scan and it's page five. And what you're gonna do on this page is you are going to probe the ideogram squiggles again on S2, S3, S4. So you're gonna take your S5 page. Grab, so you've, com, you've gotta complete these in order. First you do T1, then you do S2, then you do S3, then you do S4. So S uh, general scan, which is page five, is done last. So when you're done, <coughs> okay, I'll show, you, I'll show you the general, the page five again. So page five is general scan at the top, Put a five in the corner, so general scan in the middle, and then a five. And then you have S2 underline, S3 underline, S4 underline. So you have three columns. One says S2, one says is for S3, and one is for S4. Okay. Can you recap all the pages right from scan one? 
quickly? I will after I finish this because this is the last page. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we've got our, we've got our final page, okay? I want you to take your final page and I want you to grab S2. So pull out S2. So I want you to take and put your general scan over top of S2. I want you to cover the page up. So it looks like this, okay? So here's S2 and I just want you to have your ideogram sticking out. So make sure that your ideogram is showing, but you're not actually showing the rest of the data of the report. You're only showing the ideogram on S2. And what I want you to do is I want you to probe S2 and whatever comes up to you sensory wise, what you're sensing, what do I see? What do I smell? What do I hear? What do I taste? What do I touch? What are my emotions? I want you to write them all under S2 column. So you could say wet, cold, dry, round, yellow, blue, happy, spinning, spinning to the right, feels like lifting upward, rocking left to right, dry, rough, mountainous, subjects. You're gonna fill, so you're gonna probe the S2 again, and you're gonna fill it under column two. And once column two is filled up, I want you to go ahead and take, grab your S3 page, do the same thing. Lay your general scan page number five over three, and I want you to probe into your ideogram on S3. And I want you to fill in the column of number three. It's rough, it's smooth. There's a subject, there's a mountain, there's energy. It's wet, it's dry, it's cool, it's blue. It feels happy, it feels scared, nervous. Whatever your sensories are, you fill them in under three. Once you filled out the, the column, then I want you to grab your S4 and then do the same thing. Make it so that just your ideogram is sticking out on S4. I want you to probe into S4 and I want you to list what you're sensing on S4 and fill that S4 column up, okay? Now you're never gonna go like this and cheat and look and see what you wrote, all right? I like to call this checking your homework because it gives you another opportunity to connect to the target and write the information down on your scan without knowing what you wrote. And so you're not gonna go back and look at what you wrote. The whole time you're doing the remote viewing process, you are always gonna be sensing, okay? So you're always gonna stay in that sensory mode. Okay, that is, now the very last thing you do after you've completed your report, you're done, completely done. I want you to write E-O-S, squiggle. So you can write it anywhere. You can write it on any, uh, you can write it on the first page, you can write it on the last page. And it looks just like this, E-O-S, and then make a fast squiggle. And what that stands for is end of session. So you were connecting when you were making squiggles, but now you're ending the session with the squiggle. So this is your goodbye. This is goodbye, I'm disconnecting from you now. I'm, we're closing the connection. So EOS squiggle, and you can put it anywhere, just make sure you do it. But only do it once you are fully done. Okay, so. That's it, that's the five pages. So do we have any questions on those five pages before we move on? Does everyone got it? You know how to give me a thumbs up if you, you know. Okay, looks like, looks like most of you got it. Okay, is there anyone that doesn't understand all of the five pages? You gotta speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> okay, I'll recap, quick recap. First page is your transit page. 
where you put your Secret Service code name, whatever your code name is right there, the time, the date. Then you put uh, ES and PS, your emotional state, your physical state. Then you're gonna put, um, you're gonna put the eight digit number. You're gonna make your ideogram squiggle next to that. You're gonna put viewer blind, VB, because you're always viewer blind. You never know what you're viewing. You're gonna make a transit line. That's what that line is, is you're transitioning away from your emotional and physical state. You're saying goodbye, emotional, physical self. I am peacing out. So that's why we have T for transit line. That's what that stands for, is I'm peacing out. Now your ideogram squiggle might be small and it might stay here. Your ideogram squiggle might make up the whole page. It doesn't matter. As long as you do it fast, that's all that matters. Um, and we're going to take a little break before we do our first remote viewing, just so you guys know. Um, okay, page S2. Page S2, S3, S4 look exactly the same. Okay, and this is what it looks like, right? So you've got your eight digit number, you've made a new squiggle, you've got S and you've got two, and then you've got your A, B, C, D, and AOL. And A is describing your ideogram squiggle as you trace it with your finger. B is for your gestalts, which we practiced a lot. You've got your um, surface, subject, liquid, energy, mountain, structure, paraphysical. You've got your C section, which is describe, don't identify. It's your senses. What do I smell? What do I see? What do I hear? What do I taste? What do I touch? What's the temperature? Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it big? Is it small? Is it yellow? Is it blue? Do I feel excited? Do I feel nervous? Right, you're gonna describe. And if you go into identifications, you're gonna drop your identifications on your AOL and you're gonna drop your pen. And you're gonna move your body, you're gonna resituate and you're gonna let that go. You're gonna go into the void every single time you grab a sensory puzzle piece. So, a sensory puzzle piece because what you're doing in this process is there's no analysis done in this process there's no logical mind that takes part in this process it is only sensory and so you're just sensing you're gathering sensory puzzle pieces and you're writing them down and you're going to write down every single piece of information that comes through you every single thing and then d is for your sketch you're just going to sketch it doesn't have to be pretty okay so s2 s3 s4 look exactly the same and then the last page is the general scan, and it looks like this. General scan, page five. And you have three columns. You have S2 column, S3 column, S4 column. And you're going to probe into your S2, and you're gonna fill this up. You're gonna probe into your S3 ideogram, and you're gonna fill that up. You're gonna probe into your S4 ideogram, and you're gonna fill that up. When you're finally done with your whole report, you're going to EOS and squiggle to get out. And that is the whole methodology of remote viewing. Now, I know this structure might seem a little bit woo, overwhelming or a lot to learn, but after you've done it a few times, you're going to know how to do it. It's going to be easy. It's going to, you know, the, you're going to do it a few times, and then you're going to be like, okay, this is easy. I, I know this. But right now, it's a lot to learn. Um, so can, someone's asking, can we get four different readings from the same ideogram? Um, so the number that we use, you're using the same number the whole time. That number is like an invisible arrow and it's directing you to connect to something that the tasker has assigned. And so you don't know what that is because you're a viewer blind, but there's an invisible arrow sending your consciousness to, to connect to that. So basically, and you are going into the void and you are dropping your identifications so that you can expand your consciousness and that you can become one and merge with the target. And then it becomes an experience inside of you. It is your innate self um, that is experiencing this. And that's why remote viewing happens within. It's not gonna be something that happens outside of you. It's not gonna be something that you see externally from you. It's all gonna be going on within you. And so as you do this, as you do practice, 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 practice session, it's gonna help hone you in to how you're getting accurate data because after you do your first report, I'm gonna oh. help you then go into the analysis of somebody's not muted. Can somebody mute themselves, whoever that is? Um, I'm gonna help you analyze your data 
And I'm going to have you circle everything that you got right and figure out how did you get that correct information? Did most of your correct information come through seeing? Did you see it on your mind's eye playing out like a movie? Did most of it come in through hearing? Did the accurate data come in through emotions? How did you get that accurate data? So I'm going to help you hone your process and hone your skills through doing this exercise. And so you're going to do this exercise, hopefully more than just today, because it's going to get you closer and closer and closer into that line of accuracy. And some of you are just going to become accurate just from the get go. And that's, that's cool too. That's totally normal. Um, okay. Any other questions on this? before we take a break. What's the purpose of making S2, S3, S4 for the same reading? It gives you more opportunity to get um, a broader scope of honing into what the connection is. So each time you make a new ideogram, you're getting a new opportunity to connect to the target or connect to the objective. And so you, we give about an hour the first time that you're doing a report. You will get faster at it as you, as you do it. Some people can do reports in 15 minutes, but usually it's an hour when you first start doing it. So the, um, you might find if when you do an S2, your S2, you get all this information and you might find you get entirely different information on S3 or entirely different information on S4. Don't worry about it. You're not trying to judge the information you're getting. All you're doing is sensing. You're not gonna go into analytical mode. You're not gonna look for it to make sense. You're not gonna try and make sense of it, but your logical mind is gonna try and interrupt and you're gonna drop it into AOL and just let it go. So you switch to the next page when your page is full. So you're gonna have a completely full S2 page it's completely full. Then you're going to go on to S4. Then you're going to go um, on to S5. So you should have at least 30 pieces of data written under the section C. Um, everything should be filled out. Everything should be filled out. All the information is there. You just got to let it flow. And if you let your ego go and you go into the void and say, I'm going to let myself be a fool. And I'm going to get only what the tasker wants me to get. Just let it all come out, let it all flow. And do you know what? When we look at the data, when you're done, we're gonna find that you had some hits, some accurate hits on the target. But if you restrain the data and you don't let it out, it makes it very difficult because um, that's the ego, that's the judgment, right? That's the part of the self that wants to control the process. That's the logical self that's insecure, that wants to say, I wanna control this narrative. I wanna know what's going on and I'm not sharing the information unless I know the story that's being told. And so we've gotta take that part of ourselves and we gotta stick it in the other room and close the door and just say, hey, logical mind, you're great for helping me with other things, but you are not helpful in this, in this aspect. Um, okay, any other questions on this before we go to a break? Uh, a question about uh, can we be our tasker and if we are our own tasker, how do we go on about it? Yes, um, you can be your own tasker and here's how you can do it. So, um, I, so you can make a list of things that you want to task and I can teach you about tasking. Um, there are effective ways of tasking and ineffective ways of tasking. So when someone is tasking you, their intention acts as a fingerprint that goes onto the task. And so how that happens is, is there is a lot of remote viewers or taskers, but maybe they're not good taskers and here's why. So if I wanted you to remote view my bank account in 10 years, okay, Remote View Heather's bank account in 10 years. Well, maybe I have a bias that I really want there to be like $10 million in there, okay? And so I make up the tasking and I say, describe Heather's bank account in 10 years. But my heart is like, man, I hope it's, there's a lot of money in there. So, and I give you the task, well, you're gonna get what I wanted. So, well, why is that? Because 
I am contaminating their remote viewing process. And so the remote viewing process is both the tasker's responsibility and the remote viewer's responsibility, okay? And so as a remote viewer and a tasker, both times when I'm doing this, I have to be in complete neutrality. So whenever I make a task, I have to be 1000% neutral so that I'm not contaminating it to any particular outcome that I want something to be. And so that's actually what's happened with some other companies that do remote viewing is they, they haven't stood in those, those, that layer of efficacy and put themselves into neutrality because a remote viewer will get what you want them to see. If you, so you have to be a very neutral person, um, very, very, very neutral position. Okay, so how to task yourself. Number one, be extremely neutral. Number two, um, you can make a list of things that you yourself want to remote view that you are curious about. And what you'll do is you can take some pieces of paper, just cut them up. Um, I've got like a gazillion in here. And um, so you write your whatever it is, describe, blah, 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 whatever it is you want to know about, fold it up. There's nothing on there and stick it in the box. Do 100 or 200 of these. Shake your box up. You're gonna, when it's time to go into remote viewing, you're gonna put on your Theta Beats. You're gonna fish around in your box. You're gonna scoop one out. You're gonna make up a number, any eight digit number. You're gonna write that eight digit number on the outside of your paper because now you've just attached the number to an objective, even though you don't know what it is. You're gonna set it down and then you're gonna do your report with that eight digit number that you just made up. So it's that simple. Only when you are done with your full report, can you take this and open it up after you west out and look and see what you just remote viewed. And now you can look at your data and you can say, what did I make up? What did I have accurate? Let's see where the rubber meets the road. Let's see where I really got this, or let's see where I really made this up. And so this brings integrity to the process. And so I have um, probably at least 100 tags that you guys can start working on and practicing on. Um, if you want that are in, we just started a remote viewing group. Um, maybe Dips can post it. Um, that you guys can join and I have tags in there. So you guys don't have to make up your own right away. You'll probably make up your own over time, make your work on your own remote viewing box. Um, and we have ones that you can practice on. You can do the report, you can send the report to me. I'll, an I'll analyze it and I'll send you feedback and you'll see what you remote viewed. Um, so that's called giving feedback. But yeah, that's how you're gonna, that's how you can set it up to do that yourself. So. Any other questions or should we take a, take a quick break? Cause we've been going strong. Uh, one question on the side effects of remote viewing and whether it is safe. Uh, yes, it is safe. Um, so you don't want to just go remote viewing anything though. One of the things that you can do while, before you go into a remote viewing is you can probe it and you can say, is remote viewing this in my highest good? And if you get a, you know, don't go in here, then don't go in there. I mean, I get a gazillion friends that have photos of aliens or something, and they're like, hey, Heather, remote view this for me. Or like, hey, can you remote view my future husband? Or hey, can you remote view this or that? Okay, your friends are gonna go wild when they learn that you can do this. So you're gonna have to set some major boundaries. And you don't wanna go connecting to things that are not in your highest good. So one of the things that I, I say, no, I don't ever take candy from strangers, okay? Because you are actually connecting to that. No taking candy from strangers because you don't know what is connected to that remote viewing. You have to have a great level of trust with your tasker that they're only gonna send you somewhere that is in your highest good, that they're not gonna send you somewhere. And I've had friends that have seen you know, alien stuff and they want me to check it out. And I'm just like, no way. Like stuff that I feel in my heart that it's like, this is not good because these beans don't have the highest interest for, for all. 
but people will ask you to look at things and my so my to way to protect you is you can make your own remote viewing box but don't take taskings that are posted online from especially from military people and i won't get into detail about that entirely but i'm warning you don't take anything from military people just make your own remote viewing box or you can get a tasking for me everywhere i send you is somewhere that i personally have been so i'm not going to send you anywhere bad um bad or scary um you're going to be safe um a couple things that can help you with remote viewing that i want to let you know about real quick um a complex b vitamin you can start taking that that does help monatomic gold ormus that helps synchronize the hemispheres of the brain that's known to help remote viewers infrared lights um, i use a juve uh, juve professional system it's super powerful um, infrared lights because your all of your body is little antennas and those little antennas if they're charged up they're telling you the story of what's going on, of what you're sensing and where you are. And so infrared light can help with that. Also, if you don't have access to infrared light, you can get a little bit of sun. Um, that can help you too, is a little bit of sun can help charge your cells because we want to charge the cells. Um, magnesium is also one that uh, the, myself and other professional remote viewers take. And so those, those are things that I recommend to help you. Um, I don't recommend the use of any drugs at all. Um, I don't judge people for doing drugs. Cool if you do, it's totally up to you, but it can affect remote viewing in a negative way where you can get a uh, temporary consciousness high, but then you're gonna dip really low and those effects can last you for many months. So I don't recommend um, the use of any drugs. Um, there are things that you can do to raise your own body's natural DMT. Some of those ways that you can is to, um, I know you might be familiar with um, going into a dark room. So a dark room can help with that. Um, um, there's deprivation in a dark room. So you can do that for a day or a couple days. That'll naturally raise the DMT. But um, yeah, float tank is very helpful for that. Um, it's fantastic for that, actually. Um, so those are the things that I have found work, and they work really, really, really well. Um, people have asked, like, oh, does like smoking weed help? No, it's the opposite effect. So people that um, smoke weed, it actually uh, dims the senses. So it's very counterproductive for psychic development. Um, it's really crappy and it won't just dim you down while you're doing it. It'll dim you down for quite a while after you're doing it. So, um, my personal recommendation is those things that I said that I found that do work and that other professional remote viewers use. Um, another one that you could try is mugwort. Mugwort is good. Um, you can, I think smoke mugwort or you can have it as a tea. I think it tastes horrible as a tea, but mugwort, um, is helpful um you can it can help with lucid dreams and things like that um yeah so being in a so so remote viewing you don't want to have distractions because you're going to be meditative right you're going to be super chill meditative you're going to be in a comfy place the comfy pillows maybe in a dim room you're going to be because again the theta zone is where you go into right before you fall asleep and it's as you're waking up, it's that very tired, relaxed state, okay, that you're gonna go into. Um, I have not done any research on Reiki mushrooms or lion's mane, although those are healthy things for you, I don't know that they would particularly help with remote viewing. But the things that I did mention do help with remote viewing. Okay. All right, All right so Dips put those in the chat. So any other questions on your report? All right, you guys seem like you got it. It's vitamin B, B as in boy. So take a complex vitamin B. So I take one from Life Extension. Um, it's a pretty good brand. Um, I take complex B and I take magnesium. Um, and I use the Juve infrared light and I have monatomic gold ormus. 
Um, Gary, um, how do you, if you're in a meditative state, how do you write stuff down, especially lying down in a dark room? Um, I'll sometimes use like this, which is just, um, it's, uh, it's just like a tray and I'll put my paper on the tray so that I can just really make sure that I'm nice and relaxed and, and that, you know, nothing is, you know, that I'm nice and relaxed. I have a firm surface to write on. So that's what I, I like to do. Oops. Okay, so let's take a quick break. Um, let's take five minutes, run to the bathroom, stretch your legs, get some water. You guys did absolutely fantastic on that report. So really good job. So I'll see you guys in about five minutes. For those of you that don't wanna take a break, I'll hang out and you guys can ask questions. I have a quick question. Yes. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, perfect. All right, great. Um, when you're um, scanning the little squiggle, mm -hmm. um, do you do that with your non-dominant hand, did you say? Um, yes, correct. So you're, okay. you're gonna trace it with your index finger, your squiggle, with your yep. non-dominant hand. Meanwhile, your, your dominant hand is filling out section A. Okay. And so you're like, okay, it swirls around, it dips downwards, it, it gets to the right. Um, so that's, yeah, that's how you do it. Okay, okay. And then, and then as you're um, right filling in all the other sections, then you're, you're still scanning that squiggle? Um, when you're filling out, like, so after you've done section A, um, what you're going to do during the whole time is you're going to use your pen tip to um, poke the okay. you're gonna poke the ideogram squiggle and so you're gonna have like a ton of little dots on it by the time you're done with the report on each one there's gonna be like a connection point connection point and you're gonna poke it at different areas poke it at the beginning the middle the end you're because what you're doing is you're connecting to it as you're doing that okay so then you're you're poking that dot and then right away you go and write in whatever section it belongs in yeah, as soon as as soon as the information comes up to you, um, so you'll be you'll be like, okay, so you're waiting, you're in the void, okay, you're meditated, you're in the void, you're withholding thought, you're waiting to see what sensory information is coming in your body. Um, as soon as you start getting sensory information in your body, then you're gonna um, you're gonna keep poking this, and you're not gonna like poke it like that, like really fast. You're gonna Hold it for a minute, or not a minute, but you hold it for a few seconds and then check a different area. And what you're doing is you're connecting, you're, you're probing. We call it probing. So you're probing it for information. So you're just connecting around to it. And you're gonna probe your whole report long. So from basically the beginning to the end, you're gonna probe. Okay. Okay, thank you. No problem. Um, should we do an RV if we are very sleepy or tired? Some of my best RVs are when I'm sleepy. So I think it's going to depend on, on you particularly because you might already be in that theta zone state if you are, you know, sleepy. What I've had to do because I would remote view all day long is I would listen to theta and then I would listen to alpha um, to wake me up because Beta and alpha waves are awake states, whereas theta and delta are sleepy, drowsy states. So I would, um, when I was doing it like for the whole day, I would fall asleep in the middle of my remote viewing. So I would kick on alpha um, just to perk myself up, to get myself going again. And then I would go back into doing reports and listen to theta again. Can you use remote viewing to ask a question about your own future to get advice? Um, should I apply for a new job? Yes, you absolutely can. You absolutely can. In fact, one of the things that I task my students to do is um, 
I send them back to all the times that they needed extra love and support. And I even did this for myself, times where I had dark hours and I needed extra love and support. I sent myself to those times so that I could be there to be an encouragement and a love and a support to myself. So you can use this for emotional healing as well. The cool part was, is when I did this, I, I've also been very clairvoyant most of my life. And I knew that future me was coming back to visit little me. And I thought, wow, how am I a time traveler? How did I come back? Um, so it was very full circle for me when I learned how to do remote viewing because I figured out how I was sending uh, myself, myself around. There's also a phenomenon known as bilocation where you can be here and you can be at the target that you're remote viewing just as much as you are here. And so that can happen. There's also tri-location. There's, you can be in more than one place. And so I experienced that very early on in remote viewing where I was there. Um, mm, I had a question. Yes, please. Yeah, so uh, I was wondering that when the templates were being made and you, were, you said to poke on the uh, ideogram and write, uh i couldn't feel anything inner like you know there's raining outside so i i could only smell the uh, smell of the soil and i couldn't uh, sense anything else so uh, maybe uh, with the music or or the uh, sound it will create a difference do you think so so as you do a bunch of remote viewings um as you do them and I see your feedback, I can help you identify where your strengths and weaknesses are. So some of you are gonna be very good at hearing, some smelling, some tasting, some touch, some emotion, some, some visual. And so after we identify where your strengths and your weaknesses are, and we have you do a, a number of remote viewings where you get really comfortable with that, we then start to tailor a different remote viewing structure that is tailored specifically for your strengths and weaknesses. But we use this structure as an introductory structure to get those identification or to, to identify where your strengths are and where your weaknesses are. So where do we send our reports to? Uh, um, it's your... So to me, you'll send them to me. And so the ones that we're gonna do today, um, you're gonna send me your report. You're gonna take pictures of it so I can see what you've got. And we're going to reveal um, what the target was after you're done. So I'm really so excited. We are going to mail it to you? I uh, know you won't mail it to me. You'll just, you'll take a photo of it. And um, you can even post it in the group. You can add a file, um, a photo file, and we can check it out there. Okay, the chat box, you mean? Yeah, yeah, the okay, chat box. Fine. Yeah. Fine. Uh, any prerequisite that we have to uh, maintain uh, while remote viewing, like, uh, you know, put uh, dim the light or something like that? Um, it's totally up to you, whatever you're going to find that is most comfortable, because really what you want to do is you want to be no distractions. You don't want people around you talking. You don't want a dog coming and jumping on you. You want zero distractions because you're, de you're detaching from your connection to here. You're letting go of the limitations of what you think you are so that you can, um, so that you can become the void. You can go into the void and become nothing. So anything that is gonna distract you or make you uncomfortable, get rid of that. If there's TV playing in the background, have it shut off. Make sure that if there's other people in the house that, hey, I'm having some quiet meditation time and I can't be interrupted right now. Um, maybe a little do not enter sign you hang up on the door or the door is closed means, you know, don't enter right now. So I've got a question about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm 25 weeks pregnant with a very active little girl and she's constantly kicking. So will that be a distraction or a problem? Well, you can still, you will still be able to remote view, even if you're, you're pregnant for sure. But, um, you know, if you're having a, a physically taxing day and it's like, you know, really, really distracting, then you might find it's like harder to connect because it's like, 
Well, just like if you were trying to remote view and you had a headache or maybe you slammed your hand in the car door, your, your brain's going to be like, ah, my hand hurts, my hand hurts, rather than letting you be in that zen-like meditative state that you really want to be relaxed in. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay. So Hannah has a question and she asks, what's the link between remote viewing and manifesting our realities? If we manifest as we go, then is remote viewing the future just declaring or recognizing what you want? So really cool question. So when, you're, when you are remote viewing with this style, which is CRV style, there is an observer effect that takes place. You are seeing the most probable outcome from this point and place in time. So you're looking at the most probable outcome. And so remember, um, time is not linear. Time is actually happening all at once. And part of your question ties into something at, that's called remote influencing. We're not gonna teach remote influencing in this class because, well, we can't teach everything in one class because it would take me you know, quite some time to get through it all. But what you're actually referring to is remote influencing. And we can use remote influencing to influence outcomes to the way that we would prefer it to be. Now, remote flu influencing, we're always influencing. We're just not aware of it. Um, but you can use, there is, a, there is an aspect of remote influencing that you can use to help bring about outcomes that you want. Um, and I can teach on that on the future if you like. Do I always need a taskmaster to do remote viewing? Um, you, can, you can be the tasker, but you always have to be blind, right? So you need to make at least 100, 100 taskings to put in your box, right? Um, and make sure that you do it the way that I showed you. Um, take a piece of paper, write it down, fold it up, and put it in, in your box. Do you always have to be blind? That's the only way to ensure the integrity. And as you do this, you're gonna learn more and more about yourself of like, whoa, okay, so I made that up or I got that right. Okay, let's see. Um, you can, uh, if weed is in your system, should you do this today? It's not gonna hurt you, um, but it's, you know, you're not your best, right? It's, it's gonna, you're not going to be your best 100% self that you can be because we does have a delay, delaying effect on psychic abilities. It's not going to hurt you, but it is, you, you are, you know, it is going to pull you down a bit. Okay. What is my perspective on food? Um, try and eat nutritious as you can, because again, um, every cell in your body is a little antenna, and those little antenna are picking up the sensory information that's going to help you be a, the best remote viewer that you can be. Um, okay, let me try and get a few more questions in. Right, any other questions? Okay, apart from the various RV tasks, how can we relate RV to connect with ascended masters and angels? Um, so you can connect, so if you're making your own, your own remote viewing box, and I send my students all the time to really cool beings um, in really cool places and really cool times um, and really cool things. So you could say, you know, so as you're feeling, you know, putting a gazillion things in your box, you know, one of them could be, you know, connect with this particular Ascended Master. Uh, you could say, connect to and describe the Christ Conscious, well, that's what this one is. Connect to and describe the Christ Consciousness um, and receive detailed, um, re receive a detailed message that is unique for my own personal growth. Um, so you can make your taskings so that you are connecting yourself to whomever you like whomever you like. You want to talk to Archangel Michael, you can talk to Archangel Michael. You want to talk to um, a Palladian that is in your highest good, 
you can say connect to and describe the Pleiadians that are in my highest good and receive a message of wisdom from them. And so that'll come through in your report. And so what you're actually doing is you're experiencing them in the truest way that they are rather than ex something that you've made up in your mind in the way that your mind thinks that they are, you're actually truly engaging with them. And so that's how you can do that is, um, so I have a mix of what's called hard targets and what is called soft targets. So hard targets are things like, uh, there's a mountain climber and he's climbing this mountain and I just sent you to remote view it. And then I look at your remote viewing report and you look at the, the, what it was you were tasked to, uh, maybe it's a video of someone mountain climbing, and I say, okay, here's your feedback, describe what's happening in this video. And if you're describing someone who's mountain climbing and you're drawing pictures that are accurate to what is going on, you know that you have a high level of accuracy, okay? If your stuff is like you're drawing pictures of a cat and a coffee, well, you didn't do so great that time, and that's all right because every time you do it, it's practice for yourself. And so that's a hard target. A soft target might be something that you don't know the answer to. So you might have to remote view a soft target more than once to say, how do I know if what I got was correct? Well, you can have the same tasking written several times in your remote viewing box if it's something you're really interested in. Or um, so you can remote view it again and again and again, and you can save your reports. You can overlap them and look for consistencies in your data. So, so I like to do a mix of both soft targets and hard targets with students because both are extremely valuable. But that's how you're going to use this process. So that's what's so great about this. Um, there's, there's no kidding yourself. You're really going to see, this is kind of a tough love process, but it's going to help you grow so much. If you will dedicate yourself, this is a worthy pursuit. It's going to help you grow immensely. Um, Hannah's asking, is this similar to astral travel? That's a very popular question about remote viewing. Yes and no. So number one, if, um, say Melissa was astral traveling, I could see Melissa's body astral traveling. I could sense it, I could pick it up, I could even get a photo of it. There are, people have taken photos where they've seen this astral light body floating around places. Now, when you're remote viewing, people can't take a photo of that because what it is is it's pure consciousness. And so when you're in astral form, you're just in the one body that's leaving. I mean, sure, you have your physical body, but in remote viewing, it's different because it's expanding your consciousness. So you're not actually going in that way. But there is aspects of biolocation that can happen in remote viewing as well, where you can have a yourself here and you're actually there too. So there is some overlap, but it's not exactly the same thing. Very good question. So John is asking, I get this squiggle should be giving us in, uh, incoming information, but how or where does it get um, charged with the RV info? I'm not sure how that part should work. Okay, so when you write down the number, the number is attached to a tasking that I, the taskmaster, made, and it has an invisible arrow to point to your consciousness to go there. As you make the ideogram squiggle, you are connecting with the target, you are becoming one with the target. You are merging with the target because after all, the target is you because you are everything. And so you're experiencing the target in yourself. And so your squiggle is your, your artistic representation of that, that energy. So it's like you could think of like an energetic squiggle coming out of you. And so by poking that and by connecting to that, um, it's helping you connect to where you're at in the remote viewing testing. So that's, that's how that works. That's why we probe it the whole time. Mm, okay. So let's see. Um, Amanda is saying, can I please repeat the formula task for the example of the Christ consciousness? Um, yeah, so when you're making your own remote viewing box, you can say, um, describe and connect to the Christ consciousness 
and receive um, a message from them that is in my highest good. So you're gonna connect, you're gonna connect to them, go to them, but you're gonna do it blindly, right? Because we wanna know that we're not just making stuff up. We wanna have integrity in our process. So that's what we got, that's what we gotta do. Um, yes, you can RV inventions. Um, I've remote viewed a ton of inventions that Tesla has made, um, ancient, uh, ancient technologies. So this is a key that's gonna unlock every door. What are you curious about? Are you curious about ancient archeology, span healing technologies? What do you wanna know about? You can learn it. We have a lot of students that work on different projects where um, some of them are interested in ancient structures, some of them healing technologies. I've remote viewed all of those. Um, so you can, you can uh, dive into that as much as you like. And there's also, you're also connecting to your higher self in this. And so before you begin remote viewing, you can say, higher self, I, I'm connecting to you. Help me with this process. You know, there's, there is a higher self connection aspect happening here. And so, you know, you might not be a very visual person, but that's okay. You might get auditory information. That's all right. Okay, well, if you guys are ready, let's jump into it. Let's make sure everyone's got the mute on. Make sure everyone's muted so we don't interrupt anybody. And so your responsibility in this is you're just going to let everything out on the paper. You're not going to judge whether you think you're doing good or you think you're doing bad or that doesn't make sense or that doesn't make sense. It's okay. So you're going to enter the void. You're going to become nothing. You're going to listen to your theta beats. Okay. Does everyone have the theta beats? They don't have to be playing loud. You don't have to have it loud. The louder it is, the more it's going to help. That's not true. You can have it on low. That's okay. So make sure you've all got Theta Beats on. Go ahead and turn it on. If you decide in the future you don't like that one, that's okay. There's lots of other free ones you can find online. And again, you're going to go into the void. There's going to be no thought. And I want you to just sense, what am I feeling in my body? And then I want you to go into your descriptors. What am I seeing? What am I smelling? What am I tasting? What am I touching? What's playing out in front of me? What are the emotions? And you're gonna get more and more familiar as you do this of running through these things as it's coming up to you, okay? All right, so Mario just posted the Theta Beats again so that you have it. And if you don't like that one, you can always Google binaural theta beats. There's tons of free ones. You're gonna go into the void. And I'm gonna walk you through a very short meditation, okay? That's gonna help you. Cause this is your first time and I wanna help you get into a nice chill state. So here we go. I want you to be floating above your body. So go ahead and just close your eyes. This is a relaxation exercise before we jump into it. I want you to be floating above your body. Now I want you to be floating on your rooftop of your home. I want you to be floating above the moon. Now float above the earth. Now float next to the sun. Now I'd like you to be the sun. You are the sun. Now I would like you to be the moon. Now I would like you to be a tree. Be a bird on the tree. 
be the roots of the tree. Be the wind blowing through the tree leaves. Be all the trees on the earth. Be a drop of water. Be the Atlantic Ocean. Be a jellyfish. Be a pod of dolphins. Be a whale. Be a starfish. Be a wave in the ocean. Be fire. Be energy. Be the North Pole. Be the South Pole. Be the equator. Be the core of the earth. Be the core of the sun. Be Venus. Be Neptune. Be Jupiter. Be Saturn. Be the Pleiades star cluster. Be Sirius. Be Mars. Be a thousand years in the past. Be a hundred years in the future. Be death. Be born. Be your enemy. Be your best friend. Be small. Be big. Be short. Be tall. Be black. Be white. Be Mexican. Be African American. Be French. Be Canadian. Be three years old. Be a hundred years old. Be angry. Be happy, be grief, be joy, be music, be a dancer, be a musician, be all the ascended masters, be Jesus, be Buddha, be Kuan Yin, be your highest self. Be a quartz crystal. Be a Palladian. Be a feline bean. Be a lyran. Be a diamond. Be a jade. Emerald. Sapphire. Amethyst. Moonstone. Selenite. Citron. Onyx, black tourmaline, be a cloud, be a flock of birds floating through the sky, be a school of fish, be all time, be all space, be third dimensional consciousness, be fourth dimension. Be fifth dimension, be sixth dimension, be seventh dimensional consciousness, be eighth dimension, be ninth dimensional consciousness, be tenth, be eleventh, be twelfth, be your house, be your bed. Be your couch, be your computer, be your phone, be your mom, be your dad, be your children, be your brother or sister, be your neighbor, be your TV,
be a school, be a teacher, be a student. Be all of space and time. Be a rainbow. Be a monk. Be a basketball player. You are everything. Now be nothing. Be the void. You are nothing and everything. Now be the numbers one, one, three, three, five, six, five, six. Again, it's one, one, three, three, five, six, five, six. I've gone ahead and written those in the chat. You can see a door in front of you in the void. It's just a black void. There's a black door in the void. I want you to reach out with your hand into the void and write the numbers on the door, one, one, three, three, five, six, five, six. Make your ideogram squiggle on the door. And I want you to push the door open with both hands and start recording what you're seeing. I'll give you 60 minutes to work on this. Make sure you fill out all the pages and I'll see you soon. I'll be available in chat if you have any questions. Let me know how you felt about that. Did you feel like, I don't know what I'm doing. Did I do this right? I'm sure there was a lot of that feeling going on. That's how I felt when I, when I had first learned it. So you guys did a good job. You did something new for the first time ever. And it always feels a little funky when you're doing something new. You don't know if you did it right or not. So what you were doing is you were sensing, well, what do I hear? What do I see? What do I smell? What do I taste? What do I touch? What are the emotions here? Is there mountain, subject, liquid, energy, movement, structure? PPs, what's there? So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna move on to reveal what this was. And so we're gonna, we're gonna reveal it together. Okay, we're gonna watch it together. And then you're gonna look back through your report and you're going to be like, whoa, okay, what did I get right? And I want you to circle what you got right, okay? So I'm really excited. This is always the best part. You might have felt like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and that's okay. So, all right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the link ready. I'm so excited about this. This is going to be so awesome. Okay. All right, I'm going to do a screen share. All right, guys, your remote viewing task was describe what's happening in this video. All right, here we go. You three start jumping in right here, right now. Awesome.
Wow, that's amazing. Wow, this is probably going to be Happy to check one off the list now. Let me know how you did, guys. Go back in your reports, and I want you to circle everything you got right, okay? There was so much in there that you guys could get. So I want to know how you did. Let me know. Circle everything you got right on your report. Did you see subjects? Did you see mountain? Did you see a city? Did you see structures? Did you see some colors? Did you see some geometrical shapes? There was so many geometrical shapes. There was looking from above, looking down. There was 
the, the balloon colors there were so many colors. The music, did you hear the music that was going on in the video? Did you hear the people? Did you see the basket maybe that they were, they were riding in? Did you feel nervous? Were you excited? Uh, were you a little bit scared? <laughs> um, I'm sure there were some people that were scared of heights that were in there. <laughs> so go through and circle what you got right. How did you get it? Did you get energy? Did you get subjects? I want to know what you got and circle everything you got right. Yeah, let me know. Let me know in the chat because I'm excited. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, one of you saw red wine flying over the vineyard. That's so, that's cute. One of you uh, heard the crowd, saw the light in the horizon. Yeah, because they it was like a sunset cruise, right? The open landscape, the happiness, and the calm feeling. The round shape, the water, the lake. You got the up down motion, the horizon. You saw an oval shape. Mm -hmm. Agitation, you might have been agitated in the basket, all crammed in there, those little sardines. Joy, excitement, happiness, valley, mountains, wide lab landscape, water. The inner of the balloon, excellent. The man with the hat, awesome. Very good, clouds being lifted up. Plenty, a bunch of people sitting tightly in a room. You thought they were having a party, laughing. Um, wine and red wine. Saw people in the road, there was lots of roads and people. Lots of greenery, mountains. Some of you were seeing the box, being in the box. <laughs> that explains how your stomach feels. That's so funny. <laughs> you saw balloons. Good job, Ginger. <laughs> Song lyrics came to you. That's awesome. So go through your report. Circle what you got right. Circle these major hits you guys had. It looks like you all got major hits on the target. The crowd, the light, the horizon, vibration, sound, buzzing, colors, patterns, lines. Really great job, you guys. Water, subjects, excellent. Yeah, so Go through and circle what you got right. And then I want you to take notes of, well, how did that correct information come into you? Did you see it? Did you hear it? Did you feel it on your body? Did it feel cold? Did it feel warm? Did you feel a breeze? Um, did you smell it? Did you taste it? Did you feel emotions? Make notes on your report as to how you got that information. And also make notes on the report did you see something colorful flying in the sky and you were like, oh, it's a UFO, but it was actually a hot air balloon. So that would have been an AOL, for example. You guys did fantastic. You got so much, so much good data. Adrenaline feeling, uh, trees, lights, rainbow, clouds, peaceful. Yeah, really good. Really good job, you guys. Ear pressure, oh yeah, being up that high would definitely give you some ear pressure. Muscle use in legs, focus, calm, outside energy. Did you feel a sense of adventure or feel that there was a sense of magic or fun? And so did you feel emotions and did you add on analytical overlay on top of that because you could have gotten accurate emotions to the event that was going on but you could have added on maybe not so accurate visuals so those would have been aols so look at what did you sense how did you sense it um because for example if you might have felt cold 
your mind could have interrupted you and said, oh, we must be in the snow, right? Just because of the cold feeling. Or if you would have, you know, felt sun or heat, you could have been like, oh, I must be on a beach. Well, that's analytical interruption, right? So as you do these reports, you're going to become more and more and more familiar and your accuracy is going to continue to grow as you practice these. This is not really something that's like a one and done thing. This is like an introduction to self-mastery. And the more you do it, the better you're going to get. So I, I love reading these. Um, cool, refreshing air, sun, skies, awesome. Horizon, slanted geometry, landscape, very good. Wind, really good. Body contact, yep. Laughter, wine, yeah, that was a vineyard. That was a Napa, Napa vineyard. They're drinking their wine, going on their, on their balloon ride. Sm smiles, party. So circle anything that you got right, any sensory information that you did get right. Check your gestalts. Did you get subjects? Did you get structures? Did you get energy? Well, maybe you got those things, but maybe you added them to somewhere else where they were inaccurate, or maybe they were accurate. Excellent job, Nikki. Very good. You instantly saw clouds, valley scenery, mountains, felt cool. Water, horizon, dusty clouds. You guys did so fantastic. You guys did a really, really, really good job. You got some really great contact with the target. And this was your first time. So high fives to all of you guys. <laughs> high fives. <laughs> You guys have rocked it. You guys are a really talented group. Fantastic job. Gathering of friends and family. Excited, calm breeze, farm, town with nature. So awesome. Really awesome. People sitting tightly together. Yep. You felt heat. Yep. Muffin shape energy poofing out. Very good. Bird's eye view. Perfect. Colors, people at a window basket, perfect. Balloons, a quick heartbeat, fear, yep. Dusty, rocky path, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. You knew you were up high, sun, yep, that's awesome. Smell fruit, dirt road, orange valley, wow, great job. Really great job. Yeah, so so uh, someone says here, I saw stuff, but I didn't put it into picture that makes sense. Well, that's the thing. When you're remote viewing, you're just gathering sens sensory data. You're gathering, what do I see? What do I hear? What do I smell? What do I taste? What do I touch? What are my emotions? You're not analyzing at all. You're not trying to build a picture. You're not trying to figure anything out. So you're just sensing. So that's good. When you get the information, it might not make any sense at all. If it is making sense, you're probably doing it wrong because you're just pulling in sensories. And if it seems elusive, chase that down. If that sensory seems elusive, go investigate that. Really great job. Great job, William. Sunset, mountains, water, fields, flow of energy, um, boxes, blue sky, pattern of the balloon, uh, movement up and down, flying. Uh, you guys did really, really, really well. And so I know it might have been a little bit confusing this time because, well, it was the first time you had to do your own structure and you learned an awful lot today. But as you get used to doing the structure, you'll forget about the structure um, after you've done it a few times. It'll just become very natural for you to do. And you'll be more focused on the sensing than, oh, am I doing the structure right? Uh, what was A for? What was B for again? Or what was, what am I supposed to do with C? So as you... As you practice this, it's gonna become easier and easier for you, but you guys did amazing.
You guys did absolutely amazing. And you were a big group too. You guys did so awesome. So proud of you guys. Yeah, and there definitely was some fear of heights going on in there. Some, some people weren't, weren't liking that. But some were calm. And so each of you were connecting to different aspects of what was going on. You could have been connecting to, to different people in the basket and, you know, what was going on. Some of you might have been, whoa, look at all these colors. Some of you might have been like, whoa, I just see a lot of green and I see water and I feel like I'm high up. So make note of what you sense how you sensed it, because that's going to help us as you practice to hone in on your strengths and your weaknesses. And you know what? Don't worry about the AOLs. Everyone has AOLs and it's totally normal. So don't even worry about those. Marcia is saying, my ideogram had a disconnect. That's okay. Hearing the wind, glasses of wine, um, close to you. That's so great. Rainbow. Ooh, you tasted the gas. Very interesting, Gary. The, the gas that was being used for the fire. Yeah. Really, really interesting. Yeah, you guys did fantastic. I'm so proud of you guys. Give yourself a pat on the back. You guys just learned something. You did something you've never done before. You sat in class for hours, <laughs> you tried something new, and you did great. So really, really great job, you guys. All right, so keep those reports as you might want to do them in the future sometime. And so if you guys want, you can join the daily practice. Um, let me give you a link to our Facebook group. It's only open to people that have completed training. So I'll put the link here for you guys. There's that. Um, what else can I share with you? Okay, we also, there's a WhatsApp group I'm making for this group, if you guys want to communicate on WhatsApp, you can. So here's a link for WhatsApp as well. If you want to communicate that way. Um, also, let me get you the link for our daily Zoom practice, which is super important. Now we do two, two a day. Um, I teach the morning class, which is 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. And Mario and Risto teach the evening class. And you can, you can do either class. You don't have to come every day. It's free. You can come when you want to. But the more you practice, uh, the more you build your strength, the, the faster you're going to develop. So I'll get the Zoom link for that if you guys are interested. Also, if you found this training valuable, um, and you want to make a donation, here's our donation link. Um, donations enable us to offer this class to other people without charging them. So here's the donation link if you want to pay it forward. You guys were offered this free class because someone paid it forward to you guys. So if you want to donate $5, $10, $20, or if you don't have anything to donate, that's okay. So we're strictly on donation for that. So that link is there. And let me get you, oops. Let me get you the daily Zoom practice link because it's really fun. We have a blast. And you will have to register for this for the daily Zoom, but you only have to register once. And once you're registered, you can just you know come daily if you want or whenever. Okay, here's the daily Zoom link. All right, there's that one. And so this is really just the beginning of, this is really the beginning of, of what I can teach you. I can teach you guys so many other cool things, 
We do telepathy, we do astral travel, we make multi-dimensional tools. I can teach you how to make a multi-dimensional report, but we gotta do it step by step. I can teach you medical remote viewing, I can teach you remote influencing, there's so many things. But this course is kind of like an introductory course to, hey, here's how you do this basic structure, um, and, then, and then we can move you forward from there. But you guys really did fantastic. I'm so proud of you guys, you should be too. You guys really did some awesome stuff. So um, if you want, I'm open to questions. If you guys have any, um, have any questions, um, I'm happy to help. Otherwise, you guys are totally free, free to go. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been a complete honor having you guys here. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Thank, Thank you, Heather. You guys are amazing. Very good. You guys are so I guess good. I got here a little late. I was mixed up on the time, I guess. So I hope I can still join you in the courses. Would that be okay? That would be okay. Thank you. Thank you.